In a galaxy far, far away, there is a soul. That soul is the one perfect for you. Your opposite, the light to your dark. But you will never meet because they lived a long time ago. Welcome to the Communicast. Oh, that, that's depressing. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. What? Ryan, we are going to get copyrights hit so hard by George Lucas's dick. Yeah. I mean, yep. he doesn't own the property anymore, so... J.J. Abrams will go... Will there get we there. go. J.J. Yeah. Abrams will get well, in, his, in his fucking, fucking Enterprise and, and dick slap us. Are you, are you kidding with me? His, with his smoke monster dick? Yes. And, his yeah. Interpri- and the Enterprise. Welcome yeah, to the re- Communicast, everybody. Yeah, remember, uh, it's not Lucas anymore. It's someone worse. It's Disney. Did, Disney did, will sue... I well, mean, Disney I mean, sues host players now. That's how evil they've got. Oh, I, I actually, I actually didn't know that, but I mean, without Disney, we wouldn't have them Marvel movies. True, they they have redeemed themselves somewhat with Pixar and Marvel, but they're still an evil empire. I mean, the reason everyone was freaking out when they bought Marvel was because they were an evil empire at the time. They've now become an evil empire that makes good movies. They're still evil. I mean, they've yeah. always made good movies. Uh, Except in the eighties, uh, sir. Let's do we, do we let's really not say always. Discussion? Mm-hmm. Let's not have that discussion. I don't want to talk about Disney. And their well, I mean, John, we're not going to invite you to the Disney conversation. Get the fuck out. Okay. Yeah. You haven't even seen Aladdin, sir. I saw Aladdin. You don't even know, man. You haven't even I, seen Toy Story. Oh, it, that's Pixar. I, I refuse to watch an animated movie about anthropolog- anthropomorphic toys. Why? Welcome to the Communicast. Yes. Episode 40. Episode 40? Okay. I actually have Eight. no idea what episode. Episode we are Star two Wars. away from the meaning of life, space, and everything. I'm your host, Black Napa 101, and I don't have a computer because I was stupid and burnt the motherboard. It is episode 40. Holy crap. Nice. So, All yeah. Right. And I'm Mama Donovan. I'm the Texas Steampunk Huldra. I am Silverfist91, and, uh, but. I am the professor. I develop games such as Ice Brass Revolution, um, AESBrassRevolution.com, also appearing at PAX South. Um, let's see. Now, to begin, spoiler warning, spoiler warning. All right, we are going to discuss Star Wars, if. In case the introduction didn't make that clear. Um, Star Wars is going to be discussed. There will be spoilers if you don't want your virgin ears sullied by the tale of Kirk and Spock making out furiously. Do not listen any further. Okay? You, you, you can't. And Professor, then Space you, Dandy Professor... shows up and shoots both of them. Guys, Space Dandy sh- shot first. Yeah. Stop, yes. guys. You, you just can't. I, I will not allow this on my podcast. Yes. And then Spike Spencer showed up and is like, cool. I will, yeah. not allow the, I will not allow the sickness. So, my... so I know the ending scene where Sheridan has, you know, Picard and the uh, and uh, Captain and Admiral Adama, and they gives him a medal for blowing up Unicron. You know, that was an awesome scene in Force Awakens. But uh, don't listen uh, any further because we may spoil. And sir? that is why G Gundam is the best Gundam. I <laughs> <laughs> yes. Guys, the end. You guys this are idiots. has been the community. <laughs> you guys are idiots. <laughs> Ryan, Professor, Tori, you forgot about Liberty Prime Mark II. How dare you oh. guys. Liberty Prime Mark II? Yes. Oh, right. Yes, yes, yes. It was being piloted by Char. Oh. And then Commander <laughs> Shepard came in and he had to choose between three colors. And depending on the color, his friends will drink the, the wrong cup and they would die because of their alien anatomy. And then he blew up the Reapers. <laughs> and, the, and then we got a shitty ending. The, yeah. That, thanks, everybody. Tune in next time. You know, bye. Yeah. Go watch so, G Gundam. No, yes. fuck you. And everybody <laughs> who... You know what? Everybody down below, comment Ryan fuck you for saying watch G Gundam. Because G Gundam is shit Gundam. And, it, the, and if what, Duke Nukem Forever is still the worst game ever, like, favorite, and subscribe. To no. the point. To the point. If you haven't seen Star Wars... 
As of what day? As of the as of what is today? I don't know. The 26th. January twenty sixth. If you as of today, if you have not seen Star Wars, you are doing a wrong thing. Go to go to your local movie theater, go watch Star Wars, and then yeah. If you say you are a Star Wars fan and have, and have not seen the movie, you are lying to yourself. And there's a reason we all have belts; we can all hang ourselves. Don't actually do it. Yeah, Optimus Prime died for your sins, so you could go watch Star Wars. So did Liam Neeson. No. The fuck, Cry Gungeon. All right. Uh, so before we start the main Star Wars discussion, Pack South. Oh my God, it's coming. So no, End Slate. What? That's End Slate. No, that's. No, Pack South is now. We're doing Pack South now. Why? Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, I guess we're doing Pack South now. We're okay, I guess. We I guess. We already I brought guess, it up. So I guess we'll on. just hold off to Star Wars. Vader, Vader, get back in there. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was the other stuff we were plugging after. Yoda, Star Wars. So, <laughs> so more spoiler. After we're yeah, talking Star like, Wars, we're gonna plug some awesome trunk. stuff. Han Solo, come back to life. We're not ready. But, oh. Okay. But first, we wanted to talk about Pack South because that's a big thing coming up this weekend. Three of the Communicast members will be there: myself, John, uh, Black Napa One Hundred and One, and Tori. Um, so we're gonna be there. I'm going to be in tabletop running my game. Please come on by. I've got version seven point five ready to go. Whoa! Um, and what are you going to be doing, Black Napa One Hundred and One? What are you going to be doing? I'm gonna be walking around and trying trying to meet people and say hi. Yes. Will you have something shiny and cool to hand out to people? Hopefully, if Vista Print doesn't fuck up, Vista Print, I love you. Please don't fuck me over. Please, thank you. Bye. <laughs> yes, I will have cool things to hand out. I will have a lot of bookmarks, a lot, a lot of bookmarks. I'm also handing out art prints. I'm also handing out HavenCon swag bags. Um, and one of the guys who's going to be at my table is a Rooster Teeth executive producer. So come meet some of the staff of Rooster Teeth at my table playing my game because so- they like. I'll be there too, and hopefully with my new my new fancy camera, and we'll record some stuff. I don't know if Ooh. you want to if you want to meet me if you want to hang out and catch a drink with me, do so because I'll be probably drunk at the con. Maybe yes. uh, um, cough cough. Yes, it's very easy to have a drink with John. He's always drinking. There you go. Sh- 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 shut up. I hang mean, up. and if you want to meet me, well, you can go to John. That's good enough. I guess. Hold on, we'll go to Wiscon. That's. That's not a good idea for you guys. Avoid Wiscon. Do not go to Wiscon. Just drop me off, man. That was the plan. We'll go to Do Wiscon. Do not enter the Wiscon. We'll go to Wiscon, son. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, if we went to Wiscon, I would have to be as a troll. I would have to troll that. I would just have to ask really weird questions to the attendees would, and just laugh at them. Because, they would just uh, ask you to leave right away, I'm sure. Okay. Okay, no, no, okay. not obvious bad questions, but like the ones where like the question is just real enough to be plausible, but you're really laughing at the responses because of oh my god, these people are insane, like that. So like, of- so like a corresponder, like a, a Stephen Colbert correspondent, or Jay Leno, yeah, or mm-hmm. uh, Waters World on O'Reilly, yeah, stuff like that. It's so like, let's all so okay. Let's wrap up. Let's wrap this up really quick, guys. With the whole pack south of, we'll be there. We're going to have fun. Uh, I'll be on yeah. the outside. I'll be in the city. So I'll, I'll be in the be, I'll be in the area. I'll be at most events. If you see a guy with two big margarita glasses and a pterodactyl on his hat, that might be me. Yep. If you see a guy looking for Ross O'Donovan, that's probably me. Yes. I, I personally will be trying to hunt down uh, uh, Pro Jared and can, any other can't. tabletop gaming you celebrities can't, I can find. You, you can't say that. You can't say you're going to hunt down a celebrity. That doesn't sound right. What? Yeah, it does. I've got my net and my uh, tranquilizer <laughs> oh. darts. I, oh, we do not endorse what he's going to do. I, I repeat, <laughs> we do not endorse this. Please. I do. Yeah. Oh, uh, Fred oh. Fred is going to be there. Uh, friend of the show, Fred Wood, has confirmed he will be at PAX out. So. I, may, um, I might actually get to meet him this time because I slept in on has gone. You slept yeah. oh. Oh yeah, because you decided to be a little little baby and tap take a nap instead of meeting our friends. <laughs> hey, it's not her fault. She was up all night with Bucky. Oh my! <laughs> was, she, was she getting the fucky? God, you realize we still haven't gone an episode without a gosh darn we've, Bucky. 
We've gone an episode. We we've have. We've gone one yeah. episode. We've gone one, one episode. episode. That's oh, right. Episode. Yeah, that's... good for us. Yeah, everybody, round of applause. Yeah, one episode. Right. So, okay. You know, what, you know what movie Bucky is not in? Uh, Indiana Jones. Oh, Star Wars. Yeah, Dragon that one. Ball, too. Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. Yep, that one too. Good. Yes. Awesome. Evolu- yeah. Evolution. Yeah, Jackie so, Chan adventure. Okay. Shit. So, did you hear about how? Now, mind you, did you hear about how Stan Lee wants a Marvel Star Wars crossover? Okay. You need uh, to, you what power does he have? He is an old man. He's, you need he is an old man. Power. With, whoa. 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 Stan, Jack- I think it's arguable that Stanley has more influence on Disney than Lucas does. I Charged. think that could be said. Charged. I mean, Stanley's respected. I mean, okay, he doesn't even get a say on how big his cameos are in the Marvel movies. This is what he told me. I get a call. I go to the set. They that give me a costume. Impression. Yes. Oh. And then I just do what they tell me, and then I go home. I get a bagel. I, <laughs> I eat it. it. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, though, he does, like, when Stanley says, hey, we should do this. This is a cool idea. They usually listen to him because... Yeah, he's still actually pretty smart. Um, mind you, Steve Ditko was smarter. Um, I like Ditko more than Lee. Um, Lee. Ditko got the short end of the stick. This is a fantastic Star Wars episode so far, guys. I yes, know. yes, okay. it is. But anyway, okay. Okay. so so Thanos gets the reality gem, and then he breaks the uh, the uh, barriers down, and that uh-huh. is how the Avengers meet Luke Skywalker. Stop! And- <laughs> Stop! I, I'm doing a Pat Oswald impression. I mean, we all know that Doctor Doom could beat up Darth Vader. Oh, that is a dirty lie. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the death battle I think did prove it. Yeah, Darth Vader's force powers um are insufficient to overcome Doctor Doom's uh, magical strength. Fuck, Doctor so Doom, fucking overpowered magic suit. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's a reason Doctor Doom is. You know, often ranked as the number one villain of any comic, because you know he can. Yeah, I That's mean he true. owns Lex Luthor easily. So Star Wars. Okay. Yes. Yes. Let's start talking about it. Uh, okay. Let's boldly go where no man has gone before, <laughs> except for the billions of people who are seen. Anyway. Okay. We're gonna have, we're gonna piss off so many ba-da, people. Ba-da, 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 well, John's ba-da, gonna piss off so many people. Ba-da, ba-da, okay, ba-da, I, ba-da, I am too because I'm gonna be like, oh, books, books. Ba-da, 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 okay. Ba-da. okay. So, right. ba-da, ba-da, Black Apple 101, ba-da, give us ba-da. your general impression of Star Wars: The Force Awakens. It wasn't that good, and yeah. and this is why John's wrong. No, I mean, wait, honestly, hold on, let him finish. So. Oh, oh, let me just get it. Let me just break it down really, really easily. The movie followed an equation that works, and it it, it 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 did. If you if you can argue against it, then cool. But most people who didn't like the movie kind of realized the movie followed a, an equation that all Star War, Star Wars movies have that everyone bought into, and it just it didn't deliver. And that's that was my big thing. Like we were promised a new interpretation of Star Wars, a new introduction to the saga, and we kind of just got like a half-assed attempt. I mean, if you break if you break down every part of the movie down and look at it, as look at it, look at look at Star Wars as a whole from the from the prequels and the and the original trilogy to this movie now, it didn't really deliver. It had a lot of flaws, and overall, it just was it it, it was just trying to do a lot, but. It didn't know what it was doing. It shut the bed. We'll go into more as to how it shut the bed. But Ryan, what's your rebuttal? You're wrong. You didn't uh, really give a reason why it's bad. You just said equation. Oh, okay. Do you, do you want me to give? You, do you want me to tell you that it's a copy paste of, of New Hope? Because it is, and you cannot say it isn't because the motherfucking Star Killer base is a fucking Death Star. Yeah. Which is which was fucking stupid. Yeah. And the entire premise of. Of a of a force sensitive child on a sand planet getting recruited to fly into fucking space to destroy the, the empire, it totally is plausible. Yeah, it it, it just it didn't do anything do anything I, unique. I I hate to break it to you, but everything has the force, so people can be force no, sensitive everywhere. Sir, sir, droids don't have the force. What's wrong with you? If rocks can have the force, droids can too. Sir, there is no such thing as midi- midichlorian, so you shut your mouth. 
Yoda said said in episode two that rock, that tree, it has the force. That cock. You Those know, bees. if you if you continue. <laughs> Look, I, I'm I'm entitled to my own opinion. I thought the movie didn't wasn't that good. Like it it could have been so much better if JJ wasn't trying to play play safe. Like he he knew what worked and he did what he did what worked. And that's it. Instead of X taking a chance and doing something different or unique. So. Guys, what is your what are your opinions of the, of, about the movie? Okay. So, Ryan, did you want to no, do an in-depth rebuttal? No, you go next. All right. He's um, mad. No, because I want to hear what the professor has to say now. <laughs> okay. Because he's writing so, all this stuff down as John was talking, and I want to know what he's talking about. Yeah, the, I have to. It is difficult for me to analyze the movie simply because Star Wars: A New Hope. I watched it when I was very little, so it it was ingrained in me as a story that just is at a very young age. It, it's kind of like when you grow up with the TV show at a very young age, you don't question it. It just is. Star Wars is like that for me. The the original trilogy. I was, you know. What, six, seven, maybe younger when I first watched it. Uh, my mom got me into it. My mom is why I'm into science fiction. So it's tricky for me to think about it because thinking critically about this, so I have to organize my thoughts. Um, so that's, that's just a preference. Um, Force Awakens. I. It is not bad. I cannot say in all honesty that it is a bad movie. Um, for me, it's a question of did I enjoy it? Um, I enjoyed pieces of it. Um, it's good on technical merits. Uh, the cinematography was great. The practical effects were amazing. Good job on that. Um, love that scene with the bread. Really good. So it had some good practical effects. Um, the several of the actors were great. Um, Harrison Ford did a wonderful job throughout. You know, he stole every scene he was in. It was good. So it had pieces that I liked. Some of the dialogue was good. However, I also I do somewhat agree with Black Napa as I it copied a lot of what worked before, and I think it copied a little too much. the The purpose of a sequel, a good sequel, if you look at let's say Godfather, Godfather Two. This is timely since Abe Vigoda just died. Um, whoa, whoa, the, you're 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 putting quite the big pedestal there. See okay, if you can pull well, through. Okay. Godfather, Godfather 2. Uh-huh. Why is Godfather 2 work as a sequel? Because it takes the themes of the first Godfather, it copies what works in Godfather, which is, you know, family, the mafia, the interpolitics, but it pushes it further. It gives greater insight into those themes. It varies it up. It introduces new conflicts. So now it's, you know, Mike and his brother. It's Mike and his family going to the modern era where contrasted with his own dad going through the you know, struggles of being an immigrant. So, um, so in in this case, you know, Star Wars: New Hope. It's not nearly as complicated a story. It's the hero's story. It's you know, I mean, uh, Campbell broke it down very well. Here, they basically, you know, if the, the hero's journey, it's fine, but they should have done a different variation of it. As it is, it feels like the story that Finn and Ray are walking is the same one that Luke walked. Um, it's like, it's the same journey. It's not like a different sort of hero. It's like, it's the same footsteps. It's like, oh, and then that happens. And then that happens. And then that happens. The predictability of the plot worked against it. I was hoping that there would be some nice twists or innovations or differences, um, along the way. Something that would make, uh, Finn and Ray more distinct as characters. To, to some extent, I think it worked with Finn. Ray, not really. I, I think one of the reasons I didn't connect with Ray is she just it it just felt too I've seen this before. Oh, I've seen this before. Oh, and then that happens. Oh, okay. Um Finn was at least a little different because he had his like, I wanna run away, I wanna come back. You know, that was interesting. At least he had an arc. Ah um and there was also the acting suffered a couple cases. Not too too bad. Um other big thing, again. Black Napper brought this up. Starkiller base. 
In order to do a sequel, you need escalating threat. You need the you need what's threatening people to feel worse than what was before. So, you know, the Death Star blows up planets. Starkiller base. It blows up planets as well. I mean, it blows up more planets at once and it has this cool effect of draining a sun to do it, hence Starkiller base. So, and that's cool, but we've seen that before. We've seen planets blow up before. Blowing up a planet doesn't escalate the threat. It doesn't make me feel like the stakes are higher. It doesn't make me feel like the danger is anything new or different or like, oh, cool, new tension. Um, in Spider-Man, when Straczynski was writing Spider-Man, he wrote, he put in a new Dr. Octopus. He had Dr. Octopus and a guy like Dr. Squid or something. And so he escalated the threat when he did that. Squid figured out the technology. He improved on it. He made it more uh, potent. And Spider-Man was like, whoa, okay. This is new. So he showed how to escalate the threat. Here, no such real innovation. Um, there was not a lot of creativity put into Starkiller Base. I mean, it looked cool, but it wasn't creative. Um, I think that's the overall thing. Lack of creativity uh, because of that copy, because they fell into the same footsteps. Um, there's also a big shock moment. Han dies. <gasps> I saw it coming a mile away. It wasn't set up well. There's, when you're going to do that, when you are going to kill a major character, understand, killing a major character means you think that there are no more stories to tell with that character. You think the stories that will come after that character's death are better than the ones that come with that character. So you have to be very, very sure before you kill a character. This is a problem comics have. They kill characters too much. And then they have to bring him back because they realize, oh, wait, I have this cool story idea with this character. Well, they're dead. Well, I'm going to bring him back. You know, that's a problem. So, uh, and Han's death, it didn't feel like that. Um, I mean, the actual scene isolated was okay. Like, I like the light symbolism. Again, it's a little heavy handed. Um, you know, it's Han trying to save his son, which, which was cool. We kind of get that. But, I mean, Kylo's reaction to it? I don't know. I mean, uh, and that actually plays into the Kylo Ren, which we'll discuss later. I, oh, there, there was a I, lot lost on there. Um, I do have so, to say hmm. that the scene when Han dies is kind of comedic when he's like, father, can you help me? Of course, son, I'll help you. And I'm like, Oh, oh, I'm like, this, I'm oh, like, Oh, the punchline like, is going to be, yeah, it does. It feels like a punchline. Yeah, it, I, I know. I, 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 I kind of at first when I when I saw the movie when I saw it I was shocked that I like oh, okay he's gonna die and then I kind of laughed I was like oh this dialogue is really bad for this scene because yeah. they, they you know, they you know they're setting it up to be so bad but yeah it it wasn't set up properly I think they could have dealt I mean uh, I mean we'll deal with like what could have made it better um, Kylo Ren was not a threatening villain at no point did I find the villains in this film at all threatening. I mean, you had Hans from Frozen um, as leading a bunch of Nazis, and then you had Kylo Ren, um, Mr. Emo Hot Topic. Um, <laughs> and I mean, now, now don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I will say the beginning of the movie made them seem threatening. Like the opening of the film, like the first 15 minutes of this film were wonderful, and I really liked them, and I got my hopes up, and then I was disappointed. So I will say the start of the film, things came off pretty good, and then it just, petered out the villains were very generic um the, my, my last thing here before i toss it to tori because i know i'm talking a while but i really i've yes. really thought about this i think <laughs> about the movies that i consume as you can tell um mm -hmm. the last one it was not enough world building okay? oh yeah i there oh no, i i'm so with you on that there was no sense of scale it's like so in the very first in phantom menace they actually do a pretty good job of setting up the world. You see? Hold on. Okay, say what you want about Phantom Menace. It created several new planets. He yes. established hold the on. government that was Sacrilege. in place. Guys, guys, guys. All right, oh hold on. Just push God. the reset button. I, yes, obviously Phantom Menace was not very good. However, no, it was world terrible. World. Yes. It wasn't just not good. It was god awful. For no, once, it's I not that bad. Brian. Jeez, it's yes, just well, not legendary. Hold on. Guys, okay. I'm talking about Phantom Menace in a very, very specific way. World building, strictly world building, not talking about Jar Jar, uh, he sucked. But in terms of world, when it starts, you know 
there's a trade federation, there's a galactic republic. You know that the galactic republic dominates the universe. You get a sense of its scale. You know that Naboo is part of it. You see Coruscant. You get the contrast between those two nations. So you see that, oh, okay, there's really rich and then there's kind of middle class. And you go to Tatooine, which is the sticks. And you know that's the sticks because they say, hey, we're guarding the fringes right here. This is, this is kind of far out. So you know, you get a sense of where their boundaries are civilized. You get the sense of degree of civilized and you see what the civilized looks like. You, get, you know, you know, the Galactic Republic is really big. It I, does that well. I, New Hope. I, I, I'm going to I'm going to be honest with you that movie never gave that impression with me. The impression really? with the Galactic M- Galactic Republic was just they're just there. Well, yeah, that's the point. Well, I mean, it, like, well, it was no, 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 no. It wasn't there. It's they're just there. It wasn't there. Powerful. No, no, no. They're just there. Well, the they're scene with the there. Senate did a pretty good job of showing just the wide sweep of that. <laughs> well, just I, there. I, I, I that's agree. all that's all the impression they got from me is. They're okay. just kind of there. Do they well, do anything? Well, I mean, there was just a few ships that did a... Bur- bur- uh, well, I mean... Oh, wait, no, that was something else. Um, no. They got a new chancellor. They put uh, out one well, chancellor, and they well, replaced they, it with another. They let Jar Jar Binks convince everyone that Palpatine's a good option for a Supreme Chancellor. Yeah. They replaced Zod with Palpatine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Th- I, that's I, powerful I, right there. That's powerful. Well, no, I, I, I'm not well, saying... No, you got a sense though the Republic was in crisis. They did a good job of establishing that the Republic is crumbling. It is weakening. It is not powerful. It is falling apart. It is infighting. It is a time of chaos. And that's See, which is reflected in there. I, I do want to argue how it mm. works is, and this is going to be horrible and sacrilege because I actually like this. Um, when we had a scale of the Galactic, uh, Galactic uh, Republic, which was in episode two, when we got an introduction of how big this, this, this uh, scale is, once we got the Clone Wars series, and I'm not talking about the Getty Tarkowski as much as it's good. I'm talking about the 3D animated series. We I also got like, to, I like 3D. Yeah. We got to see how big the how big the Republic was. What was the crisis going on? What was all the fighting about? And what was the conflict? That's what I loved. Me personally, and yet again, sacrilege. I like Star Wars for military conflict. I like. I don't like space wizards. What? Okay. You like the war in Star Wars? I mean, yeah. Oh, okay, sacrilege. okay. I believe you, John. yeah, because that's a huge it, major Tori, part. Tori, I'm going to be serious with you now. John, that's completely legit. I mean, yeah. I, that's I, what I, I mean. I was being fake sarcastic. No, no, no. no. Well, like, you were. I'm. In, in, in an actual like thing about Star mm. Wars, take out the Space Wars, and you actually have a really good political movie. Like a, you can, you, a good political conflict movie. Yeah, space space wizards make it interesting, but yeah, I'm I I'm going to be 100 percent honest with you. The Jedi and the Sith are actually the least favorite part of mine about Star Wars. Oh, huh. like the, the, you take all the uh, take out the Force users, but you leave in like the bounty hunters, the, the troopers, troopers. Oh God, yes, the the Imperial agents. You leave out just the the specialists, the guys the, who the OPs, like, the OP guys, the 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 Boba Fett's, the the droids. I'll even let the droids stay in. Like, oh, droids are cool. Yeah, they are mm-hmm. cool. The the <laughs> the Finns. You got the all them guys. The pose. Like the that is. <laughs> That is what, to me, really makes Star Wars, and which is why I liked this, like The Force Awakens, because a lot of The Force Awakens was based on Finn, who was just a trooper, not a clone trooper, just a regular guy trained well, maybe from maybe not Earth. a clone trooper. Well, sort of. No, maybe. no, no. He's. A trooper. I'm fairly no. certain he looks nothing like Jango Fett. <laughs> no, no, no. They, they well, it's not that like he was. Ex- he explained that he was. He. It was explained that he was stolen from birth to yes. be trained in but, the okay. New Order. Do you remember who said that? He did. Where do those memories come from? Hmm. The uh, memory implantation is a technology in Star Wars. Remember that. No, but so you're saying it, the but, clones but, don't know they're clones? That is entirely possible. I expect but, that but, to be a twist. Like I would, because I would expect that to be a twist. Like the another trooper takes off his helmet and you see Finn. It's like, but, oh, but professor, 
But what? Professor, you have to understand too, it's already been established since um since the original trilogy that after the fall of the after the fall of the Republic, troopers were removed out of the mix and they just had to get your know, recruits. Yeah, that's yeah. that's Oh yeah, yeah. But, so uh, I mean clones I mean clones clones are possible. I'm not gonna say clones are impossible, but they're just not the only thing. Oh, I, I know. I just really hate the idea of clones, and if you bring that up to me, I will just hate everything. Well, technically, oh, yeah. the clones always had to be there, because from the first movie, he says, before he the dark time, okay, so, before the Clone so Wars. So he mentions the Clone Wars once, and that's been a thing. You know, I don't care. I hate the <laughs> idea of clones. I hate... I just hate it. I like the it's, idea of a it, privatized military. That That's... That I, like it I really like clones because biology, I'm a mad, mad scientist and biology, mad scientist. So cloning, yes. To you know? me, it really dampers like how much I care about a group of people. Like if they're all just clones, it's like, they're, all the, they're all the same person. You know what? Let's just go back to the, to the soldier factory and make more clones because that's yeah. exactly what they do. Well, that was one of the cool things the three D uh, Clone Wars show. I, yeah, and that's yeah, what yeah it was, they're all this. They're technically they they're all the same template, on that. but then they, they become different people. That. They do, but I still hate the idea. Like, okay. it, does, well, it, does, anyway. it if, doesn't allow. It if doesn't allow they, for character building. If they al allowed them to be different characters, why don't you just make them not clones? It'd yeah. be just that much better for everyone. Yeah. My the only point I'm making with the Finn thing is remember. Like just in case there's some kind of like curveball they're gonna throw in, which I could see happening. That is cloning technology goes away. Like they lose cloning technology. We know that happens in the uh by the time of New Hope. However, it would be an interesting twist if, you know, why do they tell Finn put your helmet back on? It's so that, you know, they kinda, you know, don't notice that, oh yeah, you're not the only Finn. Well, uh, you're not the only it could, be also, face. it could be it, also that he is the only black man on the universe. <laughs> uh, no, no, hey, Lando you. Calrissian has been confirmed. He's, the next he movie. is no, he is dead. Also, also military uniform. No, yeah. Billy D. Williams has already said like, no. Lando's in the next Star Wars. Uh, film. I, I'm, jo I'm joking. But, okay, okay, so but, but, mili but military so uniform. Military right. uniform. I mean, if you take even in like real life military, like. A soldier will get scorned for removing an article of their I know. uniform. I, I know, okay. I know. I'm just saying it's it's an interesting crack theory of you know what if the first order supplements their ranks with clothes. In, so and honestly, that's an interesting theory. And if it happens, well, you know, kudos for you. You you cracked that case. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. But if in, the, anyway. So but until then, to, I still world. fucking hate the idea of clones, and I wish Fine. it would just go away. All right, all right, all right. Okay, anyway, so let's but, let's jump towards uh, what we liked about the movie. Like, I mean, you, hey, I mean, hey. whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, sorry, sorry. I sorry. I wasn't done. Me neither. Hold on, but oh, hold on, Tori. Tori has to get her turn now. But I oh, wasn't oh, done with what? my turn. What? Okay. Oh, you I thought you'd already gone, Ryan. Ryan. I yeah, I let Professor go first. Right. I still uh, oh, hold on. Let me get okay, out my last okay. sentence. I was okay. talking. We were talking about Phantom Menace when we started talking about clothes. Okay. Anyway, okay. So sense of scale. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, so A New Hope, same deal. You get a sense of galactic empires everywhere. They dissolve the Senate. You know, think power is being consolidated. You know, we will rule through fear. You know, Grand Moff Tarkin's thing. It's like, whoa, okay. You know, we've got evil empire and we've got rebels, small band of rebels having to run, scurry, and hide from the big, over, super oppressive government here that is trying to control everything. So great world building there. It's not not a lot, not a lot of detail, but you get a quick sense of good, evil, and good is really, really tiny versus really, really big evil. So that was good. This one, it's been 40 years. I could not tell you, watching the film, I don't know how big the First Order is. I don't know how big the Galactic Republic is. I don't know what the power balance is between the two. I don't know how much of a threat the First Order is. I don't know if... Looking at Starkiller Base in that scene, are those all the troops gathered there? Is that a small fraction of them? I mean, I think it's a fraction of them because you have their uh, guy in charge apparently is somewhere else. So maybe he has more forces. How many? I don't know. I don't have any sense of the conflict in, in, in place. I, I mean, they reference the Knights of Ren. We see them in the flashback. So we think there are other Dark Jedi with him there. But there's... 
I, it's it's all really a mess. Like I was hoping they would like show us a map or something. I mean, they literally have a map in there. It's one of the plot devices. Wait. But they never like show lines of this is the part the First Order controls. This is where the Galactic Republic is. Here's Luke's trail. I mean, that's all they had to do. That would have been great. That would have been really, really helpful to me to understand what the heck is the power lines here. Because you've got two forces. All right. Well, what's the scale? Like is First Order an upstart? Are they small? Are they big? I don't know. Well, that they, really helped. They, they, they established it. It, it even tells you, I think they established it even tells you in the intro. It's a small remnant of the, of the Galactic Empire that's left. Right. Well, it's from the ashes. Yeah. But I yeah. mean, how big? I don't know. I mean, I, it, it's, I don't know. I just never got a sense because I didn't know their scale. I didn't know how big of a threat they were, which in turn reduced the impact of their villainy. It's like, well, oh yeah, you blew up a planet. Well, hey, Tarkin did that and he died, so whatever. I mean Well, I mean, if you just have to think about it, their scale is big enough where they can have a super star destroyer. That's got to be pretty big. True. Oh, like God. the resources John shut up. The resources that they have to funnel into making that thing is has to be phenomenal. Like True. the technology to siphon a star and then turn it to raw destruction. That's, you know, not yeah, fucking it, cheap. It does tell me that they have resources. It just doesn't tell me how popular their movement is or just how much. I'm mean, obviously the movie says, look how big a threat they are. They blew up Coruscant. Coruscant's well, destroyed. Oh, Coruscant my and three other planets, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The other planets. It was like four. It destroyed like five. No, it, it was five planets. Was five it five planets, planets at a time? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You, you know what? I had a, I have a question. Uh -huh. What happened to all the what happened to the what happened to the rebels? Because what do you mean? They even no in the movie they said that all all the rebels that were on that little area is all that is left. Uh huh. So what happened? In those, what happened to the resistance in those forty years? Like how, like how the fuck did they get that dwindled down? I, that that kind of made me kind of like well there could not have been a need for them because yeah, you know the even, rebellion. It, the rebellion mm -hmm. was just to fight against the Empire's right. presence. And then once it's gone, everyone Once it's would... gone, there's no need for Most a rebellion. Most people go back to but, their business unless you're yeah, the rebellion. Yeah, and it's like, this is what I do all the time. But even then, yeah. it just feels it just feels off. If the First Order had always been a presence, why would why would the why would the Rebel Alliance disband? Well, what if it, it well, the thing is, like it re, like the First Order is just a chunk of the the Empire. Yeah. So <laughs> that chunk could have been just the Imperial presence in that part of the galaxy. And yeah. so all that's left is the rebellion in that part of the galaxy. Everyone else is like, well, we're, uh, we're all good. So later, anyone yeah. who still wants to fight, go that way. Yeah. Typically the way it goes is the rebellion becomes the galactic Republic. So the empire falls and then the leaders of the rebellion become the leaders of the Republic. And so when the first order of Rose, my understanding, what I can infer is that the resistance arose within the Republic to fight First Order because, the, uh, for some reason, the Republic didn't just go over and say, yeah, we're going to just shoot you guys because you're bad. We're going to uh, shut you down because we're the dominant power. That's the well, thing. I mean, we don't know who's the dominant power and yeah, who's and rebelling against We don't know why you. the Republic didn't just mm -hmm. say, okay, we're going to declare war on the First Order because clearly you guys are evil. Even Doc. then, even then, I don't, I don't get I it. Wouldn't, even then, I don't understand why 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 this republic wouldn't have an already established military force. Has it been established as a republic at that point? It, yes, there is a republic. Those are, those That's okay. what he said. Right. It's like the only thing that the resistance has left is the republic. See, like okay. on their side. And th That's, That's, their... What That's what throws me off. I mm -hmm. understand. I understand that there's no rebel alliance, but yeah. if the republic is established, how come there's no military force behind this? There was. Uh, they blew it up. Apparently, apparently yeah, when they blew but... up the planets, they also blew up the naval yard. But we never saw any ships get blown up, which also I mean, threw me off. That's kind of that's kind of like like yeah, a BS. I, mean, that's I kind agree of a, with you there. That's that's kind of a, a BS -y cop out answer. But yeah. I mean, I get. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I okay, John. Think of it this way: if you have the power to destroy five cities at once, to and you have it pointed at your enemy, you would probably fire it at the places with the most military presence sure so you are you are wrong. so you would probably point it at like uh like air like powerful airfields powerful uh naval bases powerful military bases mcdonald's shut the fuck up john 
I'm sure there was a McDonald's on base. So yes. yeah, a McDonald's no, got blown a, up with the base. It's not McDonald's. It's Starbucks. That's the powerful star, the planet Starbucks. Yes. <laughs> okay, Tori, anyway. what were you gonna say? Let's jump to Tori. Everyone Let's... knows that Taco Bell won the food fast food wars. Oh my God! Let's not Ew. let's not bring that up. Hey. Hey, his, <laughs> I didn't write that. History wrote that. Wait, was that when we still had the Chihuahua? I mean, probably not. I think that movie came out before the Chihuahua. Fuck, I don't remember. Okay. Tori. Okay. So, I have been a diehard Star Wars fan for at least ten years. Since I was seven years old. There we go. So... Okay, granted, I'm probably the only one who saw the prequels first because, well, I was only five years old when the prequels started and Star Wars did not have a big presence in my home before that. I'm the one who brought Star Wars into my home. And so I always have a soft spot in my heart for the prequels. And I agree with what the professor said about how The Phantom Menace had a lot of world building. Mm -hmm. Like you create all these new worlds and different kinds of planets, like, there's, because, okay, the original trilogy gave us Tatooine, which was, like, you know, d- the desert planet. And then we also have uh, Dagobah, Swamp Planet, and then also Endor, Forest Planet, and Hoth, Ice Planet. Point is, okay, prequel trilogy gave us all these new planets. Now there's more Swamp Planets, and... There's Naboo, these all there's filled with water and just lush scenery. There's a very metropolitan Coruscant. And all that Force Awakens scenery. Yeah, all this great scenery and Force Awakens gave us like all of two planets. A copycat Tatooine and a copycat Endor. No, it wasn't Endor, it was Yavin. A copycat are you, Yavin. Are you well it saying had the there can't be more than one desert planet. I'm and just saying is that, is that out of line? I'm just saying, I was expecting, like, you know, some new scenery. We, we can have an entire planet that's actually one giant fucking city, but we can't have two desert planets. I'm not well, saying we can't have two. Have to... I'm just saying they didn't give us anything else. Yeah, they didn't. Like, they didn't oh, last time to... we got a volcano planet, and that was awesome. And now yeah. it's like, oh, another desert planet. I don't know why oh. they don't use Tatooine again, because it's <clears> the same situation where she's from this yeah, why not, like, a desert rocky... planet. A rocky mountainous planet. We haven't, I mean, something something different. Or a tundra planet. I mean, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Or something with, like, different biomes as opposed to a single biome, which is <clears throat> much... Like, how about a jungle planet? Like, you know, like a Vietnam-style jungle. Well, that's Kashyyyk. Not... The, the Wookiee planet has that. But, yeah. You, you know. know you know what? I, I agree with John, uh, Professor there. Uh, why, why can't we have planets with multiple biomes? You know, like, you know, Earth. I... That's totally something I've wondered all the time. It's like, why is it when they say, okay, I'm go, we have to go to Endor. Like, they just say that. They don't say where. They don't say coordinates. They don't say a city. <laughs> they just say the planet. It's like, great, let's go there. And it's like, they know exactly where to go. Anyway, but I digress. So that's the part that was disappointing for me about <coughs> Force Awakens, that we didn't get a lot of new scenery. We just got two kind of sceneries that we were already used to, just Jakku and... I don't even know what the name of the forest planet was. Okay. Other than that, I just remember I wasn't even like, I didn't have my hopes up for this movie in the first place. Cause it's like, I don't know how it's going to go. Like, I didn't even know it was going to pan out until like it actually did, but I did enjoy it like very much. Aww. I especially enjoyed the new characters because uh, at first I was just thinking, okay, so we're going to have like a copycat Leia, copycat Han, copycat, copycat luke and we didn't get exactly that sure they were like the same archetypes but they did um slightly different things and yeah a lot of the dialogue like with like i don't know between the officers was bad like within the military it was kind of hokey but i just liked to see the characters being friends to each other that was something that is part of the heart of star wars to me and i feel like they did that well even if they did, yeah, they did copy a lot of the plot from A New Hope, but, um, well, I grew up with the prequels, so I wasn't, like, I still love the original trilogy, but that's not my childhood. And so I did like the character interactions, especially between, um, uh, 
Poe and Finn, they just, how they like instantly connected and how they helped each other. And I really liked how Finn was not like, you know, the new Luke, new, new Leia, new Han. He wasn't any of that because he was a stormtrooper who was abandoning his post. And I'm like, oh, well, that's something I haven't seen before. So that's pretty new. Everyone else, I felt, okay. Poe was kind of a new Han Solo, except less grumpy. Because Han Solo has always been a little grumpy. Because yeah. Harrison Ford, that's just how call he is. I him grumpy, I would call him cynical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Ford, Ford has been, like, uh, Han Solo has been uh, through a lot. Like, he's been worn down. He's weathered. Uh, he's very, very experienced, weathered, not sheltered. Poe's a little more sheltered, a bit more classy, showy. Kind of deal. He's he's more polished. He's, he's, he he's next, also more polished. He would never get called a scruffy nerf herder. No, he's too he's too charming. It's true. Like when the New Hope came along, Han Solo, Han Solo was pretty. If you put him in a video game, he was that higher level guy that they give you at the beginning of the game to show you, like, okay, do what he does, and that's how you kind of get get along in the world. Hmm. It was also great to see uh, the old characters return. Han, well, I can tell Harrison Ford is very old and he's very tired. <laughs> and he probably doesn't want to do this anymore. That, and now he doesn't that, have to. I mean, I do believe he said many a times, I just want Han Solo to die. And my wish granted, bud. Yeah, I know. So, like, when he was falling, it's just like, oh, I could just see, like, Harrison Ford just being like, it's over. He's like, I can die. Just now. sees a big happy grin on his face as he <laughs> happy grin all as he the falls. fanboys crying. Mm. Yeah, it's like, ah, oh, it's like I'm free. Dude, he drank he those. To... He he drank those tears. He, <laughs> he, he drank it like an aged <laughs> scotch. See, I I can see him just go. Mm. Mm. <laughs> just going to random fanboys. <laughs> Give me your tears. No, he has Dude. a col- no, no, no. He's classy. He has it collected in a glass, and he sips it slowly, like a scotch. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. he spins it around. He spins it around. Like does the, the swirl? Aroma. Does the swirl a little bit? Gets the does aroma. A little, gives a sniff. Mm. Okay. So anyway, when it came to like what the professor said about the escalating threat, he didn't feel that. I well, when I went into the theater, I basically turned into an eight-year-old again. And just, like, you know, took whatever they gave me. So th- when they showed, okay, this was the old Death Star. And it shows the, the little one, the old uh, one. Like and this is our new thing! And it's, like, a hundred times bigger. I was actually like, oh, my goodness. I bought, I'm like, whoa, it's super huge now. And, oh, I really liked how before when um, it showed the Death Star destroying the planet, we saw it destroy the planet, but we didn't get to actually hear the suffering like, we get to see ben, um, ben Kenobi be like, oh, I feel all these screams. But we didn't get to see it. Here, wow. we actually wow. got you to see... Wow, didn't even say the quote. I am very disappointed. It's like, it's as if millions of voices just cried out, and then, damn it, we're silenced. You hurt me, Tori. <laughs> <laughs> really okay, I'm me. sorry. It's you been a really, while. You call yourself a diehard fan. You can't get the most iconic line. Well, in I've the been series. rusty for about wow. five years. That's the thing. I loved it, but then it's been a long time, and you must be rusty. I feel like I'm getting tetanitis. <laughs> Ted tetanitis. 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 Tetanus. I no Ryan. Ryan, she's oh, making me dumb. Oh, why can't you say words? She Your can't... lack of doing words is giving me tetanitis. Tetanitis, N- no, that that that's the name of this. That's the name of this episode. Tetanitis. There we go. The name okay. of this episode is go fuck yourself. But here we actually got to too, see. Right? We got to see what it looks like when this thing is actually destroying your planet. Because I'm like, what what happens? Does the ground start to glow or whatever? It's like no, you can see the beam from the sky and everyone just sort of crowds together and is just horrified. I was like, oh, that's pretty brutal. Yeah. Like they're really upping the brutality. Same with the stormtroopers because I feel like the first scene was just a big fuck you to all the jokes about stormtroopers never hitting anything and never doing any real damage. Yes. First thing I like they do that. is okay. just terrorize the town and you get to see them actually destroying things and hitting people 
people going down, just brutalizing this village. And I was like, oh, wow. Well, that's one thing they fixed. Yeah. The now that stormtroopers was, are actually scary now. That was a good establishing shot. Like, that was like, oh, okay. That we've got some serious villains. Like, this is different. You know, th- this is very much a new hope introducing Vader with like, you know, I crush you. It's like, okay, we've got that here. Good start. It didn't keep it up, but it was a good start. I, I like that. I-, I will say on the planet destruction, I think one of the things they missed, they could have done to like up the emotional is if we had gotten to know a character who lived on Coruscant, like if they had introduced the head of the Republic or a senator or someone you know, just a little bit at the beginning, like, or, or something we could connect to. And well, then we see them die. Mm-hmm. Do you, that would do you, have been interesting. Well, I do you want to know Coruscant why? Because Coruscant was already, like, established to be the home do you, of, like, many of do, everyone in a lot of the pre- in the I know, but we don't so know I know this still line there. is important. Do you, well, nobody now, but do but you know... it's their wh- home. Do you know yeah. why? It's like he, New York City. Hmm. Tori, let, let, Ryan, let Ryan speak. You want yeah. to know why J.J. Abrams blew up Coruscant? Why? Why? Because he doesn't want politics to happen in Star Wars ever again. <sighs> Bullshit! Then you, and then he pulls. Okay, the first but then you order. Take, then you, but then you take out a good element of the movies. It was actually yeah. a piss poor element, John. I, no, I hey, like wait, whoa, whole... whoa, whoa! What? Palpatine's rise to power was one of the better sub arcs of the prequels. It was one of the few redeeming, like, oh, Pal- that's cool. Palpatine's it was rise to subtle, power. Like Pal- how he got people to trust him. Tori. Yeah, Palpatine's manipulation behind guys, the shadows. The way guys, Palpatine's was- li- rise to power was good, but everything else that involved politics was piss poor. Well, that's because Lucas can't write, but exactly. Okay. Yeah. So J.J. Abrams that's took that as like, this did not work. The first time, let's not do it again. Yeah, but he should have taken it as a challenge to write it better. Yeah, um, but J.J. But... Abrams, have you, you ever seen him write politics before? No. Yeah. No. He couldn't even put the so politics he... back into Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, so he probably saw that it was like, I can't do this. And, J- and Lucas can't do this. Let's just get rid of it. Let's go back. Let's go back to how Star Wars used to be. You know what it used to be? It used to be about a, bo- a young man, a young man who finds out who, what his lineage, lineage is, and he travels with an old man who used to be friends with his father, good friends with his father, yeah. and he goes to this bar, finds a roughy, scruffy-looking nerf herder and his animal companion, and they travel <laughs> to the galaxy, and they go to a Death Star, and then they meet some people, and then they get it blown up. Mm-hmm. That's that is what Star Wars used to be. Right. And that, need, no, no, I, I, let me finish. No, 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 shut the fuck up, John. Let me finish. No, 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 let me finish. Let me finish. Then you can okay. correct me. Okay. JJ Abrams said that is how Star Wars should be. So he took that and then he put it in here because for the last for like in the past 30 years, all right? Ever like episode 1, episode 2, episode 3. Those, that's not Star Wars. That's not Star Wars. Star Wars, like, episode four, five, and six, that's Star Wars. And a lot of, a lot of people these days, like, younger people, I'm not saying kids, I'm talking about, like, teenagers, they don't know what Star Wars is. At least, not a lot of them do. There are probably a, plenty of kids that do know what Star Wars is. But not a lot of them. Well, maybe not. No, let me finish. Let me let me finish. Well, it sounded like you were finished. No, no, no. So J.J. Abrams says. So let's let's take a look at New Hope. Let's 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 get elements from that. Let's get elements from that. Sure, I'll be copying it. But this is how Star Wars is, and this is like this is how uh, we're going back to Star Wars. This this episode is establishing that is going back to Star Wars. The future, I'm believing that the future episodes will be different, will be what we expected. But this episode is completely a business choice that it's establishing that we're going back to Star Wars. Mm. I did and see it's, one fan And it's that. honestly brilliant. Because I can see it. I can see that. I could see it as a good move. Blowing up Coruscant does introduce like a new wilderness because like hey the central civilization for the star wars universe 
just got blown up. Mm -hmm. Say hello to anarchy. I mean, that can result in interesting stories if they go with that. If that's a big if. I don't, I don't have a lot of confidence for the sequel. Like I, I'm expecting this to end up kind of like the Matrix, um, here, the Matrix sequels. Like the first Matrix, awesome and amazing. That's basically the original trilogy is the first Matrix movie. The second Matrix, Force Awakens kind of reminds me of second Matrix. It's like, okay, this had some flaws, but it could be awesome if the third one really knocks out of the park. And the third one freaking sucked. Let, so let, let's, let's not bring up Matrix. Okay. Me. Also, but the thing is. <coughs> okay. Um, I feel like they are bringing a political edge to it still because of the first order and because we get to see how these clones actually work. Like we have Captain Phasma. And we see she was in charge of Finn, and we get to see a little inside of how that world works. Did, did we, we do did get we to see, see the military her? aspect? We didn't see but a lot of her though, so she, did, I don't... she didn't do she didn't do jack shit. Honestly. Yeah, she, yeah, she didn't do anything, but we know that. We'll know, get okay. to that. I I saw what you wrote there. Phasma went to waste. There are two more movies in the future that could have more Phasma in there. And yeah, hold on. We're gonna we talk didn't, about what I was they didn't say. they mm -hmm. didn't kill her off. They just said throw her in a trash compactor. So she has a chance to come back and go, hey, I remember what you did to me. I'm going to wreck your shit now. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Well, we'll anyway, we'll talk about that more later. I, I Anyway, the, I, I wrote did, that down mm -hmm. for the future. Stop j stop spoiling, Ryan. Stop spoiling. Uh, I, anyway. do wanna, I do want to say, Ryan, you made one little mistake. What's that, John? You, he is not the animal companion. How, how dare oh, you? How, how dare you? How dare you degrade Julie? No, R two D two is the animal companion. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. No, sir. Chewbacca. But no, no. I was. I'm not. Oh my god! All right, no, no, John. No, no. no. I, I just, I just want to say this. He's actually a slave, technically. No, he's not a slave. He owes Chewbacca's a life. not a slave. He, it's he been. Owes a life debt. Yeah, it's been established debt. that he owes a life debt. It's completely by choice. I know, I'm just saying. He, he's it, more of an indentured mm -hmm. servant. There there yeah. you go. Well, <laughs> well, life debt is a matter of honor. He is honor-bound to Han Solo. It's not, it's not that he serves Han Solo or waits on him hand and foot. He is honor-bound to protect Han Solo and to be his partner because Han risked his life to save his. Which is a good, which is a good topic of a, fu of a future topic, so... Okay. Yeah. I did like just one little note. I did like how the first order. Okay, in the original trilogy, the empire was totally based on like Nazi fascism, like in their style, in their fashion. It looks like they're going for a North Korea route this time around, especially with like the hats. Oh, and because they call him Supreme Leader Snoke, I was yeah. like, okay, so just changing the dictatorship kind of style here, as for. The new thing. All right. So, Supreme leader sounds cooler. Whatever. So let's move to stuff we liked. Unless we already talked about that. I don't know. Uh, well, obviously, Poe and Finn. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what? I like the idea of Finn, but I did not like his dialogue. All right. Let, uh, let, let's go around. Are so you seriously do... bashing on Finn? Hold yeah. on. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, no, no. no. I, I, I just feel like Finn could have had... They could have written Finn a little better, like Agreed. personal. Like the like the character was good, but like I just found myself really irritated with his dialogue. Like how they handled him was kind of like too comedic reliefy. Yeah, it was, it's like you it, know, for someone who is like you know, just order, order all the time, no personality, just work. Yeah, you I sound mean, I, very chill. I I mean, I respect that he was military and he had some training and he had an understanding, but the way he was just kind of like portrayed made him way too goofy. Yeah. And then I'm like, and that robbed away that robbed from his character of trying to be like find his own way. I, that's where it, I had a big gripe. Like, yeah, yes. his dialogue, his dialogue was a bit too casual. It was too. It's mm -hmm. contrasted. Um, like classic Star Wars dialogue draws a lot from Shakespeare. Um, with the uh, the delivery and the word choice, his word choice for dialogue was it's like why you got a family? Like a sore, or... No, it, his word choice stood out like a sore thumb, so it made him sound almost slangish. Yeah, like ways. hey, you got a boyfriend? Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, really? Did you really just say that? <laughs> I got okay. Let me let me point. Let me let me bring this up. I'm not saying you know, but this is just a thought. 
You, he's he's a trooper trying to hide the fact that he's a trooper. May, but maybe he's just very terrible at hiding that fact. <laughs> so he's trying too hard to be casual. I mean, I, I guess if, if you think, I mean, if if you think of it like with the rest of it, he's he's trying really hard not to look like a stormtrooper. Mm-hmm. And so maybe his dialogue also reflects on that. But he's also uh, trying to look like he's with the resistance. So still, it's like, oh, I'm. Totally he's trying have a really, handle things. really hard <laughs> to act like he's. Yeah, yeah, but but that trying too hard also detracted from his character because it just made him seem off. I mean, what if that's the point? If that's the point, then that's just bad writing. Is it though? Um, Although, when it comes to them just, like, BSing who they are and what they can do, I did really like that scene where, you know, they get the Millennium Falcon off of Jakku, and then after, you know, they actually escape all the TIE Fighters, they just sort of, you know, pull away from the controls, and they're just like, oh my god, that was amazing! That was really your first time doing that? And okay. I just really enjoyed that scene so much. Okay, so let's go, let's go, like, round robin with what we liked and didn't like, so, Ryan? Go ahead. Uh, what I liked. Yeah. Let's not yeah. do me first. Okay, Tori, what did you what did you like in twenty words or less? <laughs> I liked this new trio of characters. I feel like they're solid enough to carry the trilogy, and they're 18. good for the kids. Oh, oh you're yeah. over. I counted. You're over. <laughs> All, right. All right. Um, for I'm, I'll go next here. My favorite moment, um, the high point of the film, other than Harrison Ford. Because Harrison Ford did a very good job every time he was there. He solid performance. He did not mail this in like Crystal Skull. Um, the but other than that, favorite moment was Pin. Uh, uh, Pin. Huh. Oh God, that's the ship name, is it? Pin. Oh God, no. Pin. Uh, Pin no, shipping. No, it's not. I'm so Pin sorry. Pin shipping. I'm Poe? sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, Poe and it's Finn. called Storm Pilot, by the way. Oh, no. my, oh God. my God. Why do you know that? No, because uh, she's, no, she's from Tumblr. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Um, Why do we even let her on here? <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, Ryan, we're getting a did we ever get that way. application from that other chick? <laughs> uh, I do have an application from, from Slurder, and kind of, and another person. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So we can get rid of Tori then. <laughs> and the wise words of Donald Trump, you fired. You fired. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, Tori, we um, love you. No, you I don't know understand, you do, though, because I've we, been faithful from episode two. Yeah, yeah. If we strike Tori down, she will come back more powerful than we can imagine. You, you realize that, but anyway. she'll misquote everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, and you will so, say Tetanitis. So, look, okay. anyway, all right. English uh, is not my strong suit. All right. All right. All right. I had to anyway, take extra classes so I can go to college. Okay. Anyway, so the Poe Finn uh, banter when when Finn is breaking Poe out. That banter they have on the Tie Fighter, that was probably my favorite moment. I the ba- the chemistry between those two actors was great. They had great rapport. That was good, solid, tight dialogue. Very funny, but good. I'm, in my opinion, controversial opinion time. If Ray had not been in the movie and it had just been Finn and Poe throughout, if this was basically just like the two of them against the world, the movie would have been better. Not gonna lie, I kind of wish that too. Yeah, it would have been good, a lot better. Because because yeah. I've expressed my <clears throat> stance on it. Like I love the non horsey part of Star Wars. Whoa, Ryan, you and suddenly well. dropped out. Oh, huh? Am I am I here? Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, I enjoy the non force users part of Star Wars, and well, Finn and Poe are prime uh, examples of non force users. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was probably yeah. I was yeah favorite moment. That was favorite moment. Yeah. Ryan, what about you? Well, my favorite part of the movie is pretty much every moment of the movie that feels human. Like, I another part of the Force Awakens that I enjoy is like everyone like all everyone feels like human beings. Like, even though some of them aren't human, like they feel human. They feel like people. And that was one of the problems I had with episodes one, two, and three is a lot like for 
like Jedi, they're like emotionless and like got to stay calm and tranquil. And it, it <coughs> kind of removes the human element out of people. And so well, like it can be good for contrast, like Jedi actually are supposed to behave like that. So it, it and likewise, but, Sith are supposed to be more emotional than a normal person. So yeah. it helps. Contract. Well, yeah, it, I, I do know like, that that's like, how they're supposed to act, but that's why I don't like them, because oh, that's I how see. they act. They don't act oh. like human. They don't act human. Like, oh, you like so human. Okay. See, I, I'm, you're talking to someone like me. I like, I'm drawn to the character who is, you know, robotic yeah. or, or emotionless. Or it's like, oh, like the pure intellect type. I'm like, oh, that's a fun character. I like that character. Well, I mean, you can have an intellect that's still human. Yeah. Like Gauther in Seven Deadly Sins. Is yeah. My favorite because he's very inhuman in many ways. Like, like I, I just, it's better. Everything's just better to me with the human element because it's a little bit more relatable. Like, I can't okay. relate to like a Jedi because they're supposed to be tranquil. They're supposed to not let the, get the heat of the moment get to them. They're supposed to be at ease, like with one with everything around them. And as I get that, but I don't really care for that. Which is also why I don't like clones because, well, I mean, they're they're the same person. Although it has been established, they do develop their own things, which kind of defeats the purpose of them being clones. In a in a sense of a story. Hmm. So like that that's why I don't like force users because like non force users they are, you know, they can have the human element. I see. To you, they're more relatable. All right. I guess I'm the reason I like Jedi is, you know, I like the training scenes between Yoda and Luke is because I like the philosophy aspect in there. You know, I like the um, uh, I like the underlying Taoism of the Jedi way um, that that strongly appeals to me. Uh, but I, I at the same time, I also understand, like, you prefer uh, more the human. Honestly, I do like that scene, but like. It it's just like with Luke, he's not he's still not one with the force, so he's still still got that human element, so he's questioning things. Mm. He he fights everything. Like why does it have to be like this? <laughs> so like Luke saying like he gets a vision of his friends being in danger, like and then Yoda's like, No, you must stay here and train in the force and he decides to go save his friends because that's what a person would do. Yeah. So, Ryan, since you're talking, what didn't you like about the movie? Mm. What didn't I like about the movie? Yeah. Or what? Or like, what did you least like about it? Like, what? What kind of like irked irked you? What was the worst thing? Like, honestly, like, I. Like what? Apparently. You I enjoy. Like? Oh, damn I enjoyed almost every moment of the movie. Wow. Okay. So you had a strong positive reaction. I had because I I wanted to go into this movie believing in Star Wars again, and that's exactly what this movie did to me. See. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The death scene of Han Solo could have been better. Could have been a lot better. There we yeah, go. Yeah, it could have. One of my biggest gripes, and yes, it's it's the butt of every joke, was Kylo Ren. I look. I really wanted there to be a, a really big bad, but how Kylo Ren was handled was really bad. Okay, yeah. uh, we will devote some time to discussing his character. Yeah, because I have thoughts on Kylo Ren. I, I also think we have can move thought, on to that. I yeah. also have thoughts mm -hmm. about that, but it's probably not the same thoughts you have. I'll also, mm -hmm. also the the Star Killer base was just bad because no. Okay, yeah, the Star Killer would have could have been better. As well, it could have been not a star killer. Well, I mean, I don't know. Well, it kills a star, so I guess the name works. But yeah, but like, I don't know. The oh, my last big thing was insert cantina scene. There was a cantina. Copy paste cantina scene. That that was just yeah. Uh, that 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 felt like okay. You, Every whoa. adventure needs a tavern, boys. Oh yeah, but party. I know. But it, it didn't help that they cock teased the Mandalorian flag, and I got really excited, and then I didn't see any Mandalorians, and I got really pissed. How do you know you didn't see Mandalorians? Well, 
Because they always wear the suit. They have no, a they, suit. No, no, they, no, they don't. They don't always wear the suit. Tor- Tori, they have to pee and poop. Well, I meant they. Well, they wear that suit a lot. Like it's a traditional suit. It'll be different colors and such, but you know. Well, as far as far as far it. as far as I know, I didn't see Mandalorians. It's very okay? true. Very true. But that that really was a big cock tease. I didn't appreciate. Maybe there'll be Mandalorians in the future. Isn't there? A, I s- isn't there a Boba Fett movie in the works? No, that yeah, is flashback. A, that, yeah, a flashback. Yeah, flashback. That's a dirty lie. I mean, shut up, John. Sir, I'm still waiting for a Mandalorian war movie. So, do we really need a Mandalorian war movie though? That would that would be badass, sir. That is that is, is that even I'm, canon? Uh, no. There shut you go. up. <laughs> well, it's not canon. I mean, very few things are canon anymore. So they That's could true. always just. Do it and say it is. I Clone mean, Wars is canon. Clone Wars is canon. Like yeah, I think the th- the 3D Clone Wars, I believe it is definitely canon. Clone- yeah, because Ahsoka Tano is in Rebels, so it has to be canon. Uh, Ele- plus, elements of like some elements of the Old Republic is canon, but other elements are not. Yeah. That's kind of weird. They, they, Although, pick and, they pick and choose. They pick and yeah, choose. Yeah, the new uh, uh, video games and comics from here on in are canon, and yes. those are filling in some of the uh, the old histories, the new yeah. old. Yeah, you know what? You know what's God. funny? There was a, I don't know if it's a comic or not, but there is there is this uh, part in a comic that is canon that has someone uh, interviewing like an old Imperial admiral that worked on the Death Star. They actually got like removed from the Death Star because she always kept questioning why are they making Death Stars and that it's a stupid fucking idea. <laughs> so they establish <laughs> that having Death Stars is not the best idea. Like it's kind of a silly concept and they establish it, but they keep going with it. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so what so, g- Professor, what didn't you like about the movie? Uh least favorite moment um Oh uh, God, um, I'm I'm gonna have to go with uh, uh, Han death. Um, it, it just because it was, uh, it's like you saw it a mile away, so it lost all emotional punch. So it wasn't shocking enough to get the surprise, but it didn't have the emotional setup you needed to really be like, oh, a son. Because I mean, here's the thing: like, at its core, at its core, it's a son killing their father son killing the father is an ex is an exceptionally like bad heinous thing that is a major like whoa you know on the scale the only thing worse is would be a son killing a mother son killing a mother is is the only thing worse than son killing father son killing father means that you know they they not only identify the father as a rival which is a normal motivator for male characters but they identify the father as an enemy it's like something happened that made them see the father as as a evil entity. So you get that like Evangelion with Shinji and Gendo. You have that uh, uh, a lot of a lot of shows with daddy issues will play with this, but they usually <laughs> won't go as far as to have the son actually kill the father. So there had to be something super heavy. I mean, we know we have the whole backstory like, oh well, Kylo's going to the dark side. No, that's it's got to be more than that. It has to be more than that. But they didn't give us more than that. It was just like, Ky- look, Kylo's so evil, he killed his father. Ha! Huh. It's, it's like they treat it as a throwaway. It's like, that's not a throwaway. That is a heavy, heavy thing, especially in Star Wars, which has established the son redeeming the father as one of its major themes. And now you're going against that theme. So you better back that up. And they don't. And that is that. Oh, my goodness. And, and just because, I mean, it goes against the fundamental, I don't know, to me, it kind of violates the core values of Star Wars. I mean, the whole one of the values of Star Wars was redemption. You can be redeemed. Well, Kylo just <coughs> crossed that. Like, I don't think I mean, if they do redeem him, it's going to feel stupid because he crossed the line that it's like, you don't do that. Um, it's like, I don't know. I, 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 I don't like that choice. I don't like that choice. And I don't think it fits a Star Wars movie. Anyway, unfortunately, I think I jumped ahead myself to the Han Dai's segment. But anyway, it is honestly my least favorite moment. Um, okay, I mean, Tori. Yeah. Tori, your turn. What? I've already said my favorite moments in the no, 20 words. No, your, your, your least favorite moment in, in five words. <laughs> least favorite. 
You, you've already wasted four, Tori. Least favorite. You wasted three. I'm sorry. You got two words. <laughs> I think those clacks count. <laughs> Tori? Moving on. Kylo Ren. Did, All Tori, right. did Tori die? She might have. Okay. Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren stabbed her. Uh oh. Wait, wait, wait. Can was you Tor help me, Tori? Uh, yes. <laughs> I will show you my fan fiction. So, yeah, so Kylo Ren just Kylo Ren just stabbed Tori with his uh, lightsaber. Um, yeah. So, okay, so am I the only one who actually likes that lightsaber? No, the lightsaber. Oh, the lightsaber's, the lightsaber's fine. Okay, I like um, the lightsaber. I really I, like I, the lightsaber. I do. I do have to argue though. Kylo Ren's power really took a weird turn in the, in the movie. Okay. Okay. Uh, we can. Well, okay, put it this way. A forced user mm -hmm. has a, a, a scale of power, right? We can assume that. Mm -hmm. So, Kylo Ren at the beginning of the movie holds a blaster bolt in midair while holding or having a conversation, let's say for five minutes. That takes a yeah. lot of concentration, right? Mm -hmm. Does it as an after? He holds the bolt there as an afterthought, which, yeah, that's pretty. Okay. Yeah. Now, to, from what we know, and from what Star, what from what everything was shot on, no other Jedi could do that, right? I stop a blaster bolt and hold it in midair for a few minutes. Maybe they just haven't tried. Maybe that's just a new trick. I mean, even then, that takes a lot of concentration. And I mean, power. Darth Vader was able to just stop a blaster bolt with his hand. But he's also well, part deflect. or deflect it. it. Well, but he's also deflected, yeah. but like, I, he's also like if he if he's able to do that, shut up. If he's able to do that, you know, well, okay. right, he I says do he can't hold the blaster bolt in there. Well, right, I do want to say also that he stopped it with his hand, and we we if, what are we to say that his arm, his glove, or his armor is not blaster proof? I mean, I mean, it's a it's a cheap answer, but it's a cheap ass answer, and but but it, in Star Wars, it totally is plausible. Then how do then why does the stormtroopers keep dying to blaster bolts? Then because 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 does, science, does he because have Star Wars. does he have plus one armor? He has the plus two biceps. Oh so. man, he's got the plus two gloves, yo! Stops yeah. blaster bolts. Exactly. Um, I I just feel like they skilled Kylo to be really powerful and having different techniques and having a different scale of strength, and then they kind of just shut the bed towards the end where he kind of became this pathetic whelp. Can I make a counter argument? Go ahead. So, what do we know about Kylo Ren? We know he's Han and Leia's son. What else do we know? He's a little he's a little bitch boy. He was trained under Luke Skywalker in the ways of the Jedi, who who used their force through concentration, meditation, and calmness. In that scene, he was one hundred percent calm. He had he was not in the spur of the moment. Caught up in the heat of the moment. Mm -hmm. He, he kind of channels he, all that for later. He was that. But in the end of the movie, he was injured. He's fucking pissed. He's all that stuff, which is, you know, channeling his hatred, his emotions, which is the uh, trait of the Sith, which he hasn't mastered. He's still an apprentice in the ways of the Sith, and he hasn't mastered any of that. Which is very apparent at the v end of the movie. Mm -hmm. Also apparent when at the end, uh, the the one guy says, "I think it's time to continue his training." Oh, Snoke. Sta yeah, yeah Snoke. Snoke. Because okay. which establishes that he's still very much an apprentice, which also explains mm -hmm. why, like that one, uh, what is he an admiral? That one admiral completely shits on him all the time, which normally you don't do to a Sith master. So he's obviously a very much an apprentice, and he's okay. pretty new at this. That's probably can... why Leia thought he could still be saved because we don't know how long it's been that he turned. Has it been like a few years, ten years, or whatever? Just Especially last night. Since... <laughs> Just last Just night. Last That's night. why he found the our helmet son and disappeared the son... last night. Like, wow, well, our son didn't come home for dinner. Damn it, and Leia! You not left again. The family. We got a divorce. <laughs> You lost your ship. Damn and it, like, Leia. The next morning, you come crawling back to me. You had one he job. Went, he went to Hot Topic and got lost. Damn <laughs> it, Leia. To... While I was gambling away our Millennium Falcon again. 
You got lost gone our and son. lost our son. Damn it, Leia. I did I did kind of get emotional because like I said, I turned into a ten year old again when she said there's still light in him, because I'm like, aw, that's what Padme thought about Anakin. And, and after Ryan, she got choked. Um, and, and Ryan, I can respect that I can respect that where he's an apprentice. But okay, so that's one. And the other thing I had about him was just like his overall character. It just felt really like cringeworthy, if that's a term, because yes. Yeah. I understand that he's conflicted and he doesn't know his place in the force and he's trying to figure out where he wants to do. But, but he's a baby. Then, <laughs> if, but even then, it was just it was poor writing, mm-hmm. and for for fuck's sake, the mask. What was the point of it other than hiding his face? It, to look cool. To be Darth Vader. To be cool. Yeah, that that too. I, I yeah. mean, I I guess, but the mask. Even look I like cool. how Han did say that. It's like take off that mask. You don't even need it. I, that's what I was just like. That's so. Why? I mean, like, have you seen any other Sith Lord? I mean, most of them have masks. Yeah, but it's most a Sith thing Lord, that they do. It's a thing mo- that they do. They fuck up their face and get, wear masks. I'm the sorry. Only, the only but, one who doesn't wear a mask is Emperor Palpatine, and he still got his face fucked up. And he has a cloak. Well, so oh, hold on. Du- Dooku and and Maul both did not ha- wear masks. Darth Maul just Darth has a Maul, fucked up face. Darth, Darth Maul turned into a spider, okay? Yeah, true. He did also wear <laughs> a cloak, so there's that. Spider Maul. Let's not talk about Spider Maul. That's the one thing I wish wasn't ever. Spider Maul? Spider Maul. It would have been. I, I just think. I think it would have been cool if he had a reason to wear the mask. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. said, look, a, a man's got to be stylish. Well, yeah. It's I, for I, aesthetic. I, yeah. I mean, honestly, when he wore the mask and you f- with before you saw him without his mask, were you like getting that feel like this guy is a badass? I just feel like no. Did I you have, have that feeling where this guy is a badass? I just feel uh, like, after I like that it. tantrum with the lightsaber. Let's just, let's yeah, 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 let's be all the TV. holy fuck before that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Tori. Okay, I just that, felt something's up with him, but his voice was really bad. Under the mask. Really? I, I liked yeah. his voice. I, I, liked, I, did I, like, I liked that voice. I liked the I, voice. I, I didn't like the voice. I, I felt like it just felt like it was just being muffled. Which well, was it's not part. a well, it's not a black guy voice. So. Yeah, well, I mean, and sorry, it's not James use... Earl Jones there. Yeah. I, am spo- I am spoiled by James Earl Jones. That I mean, dead voice. True, true. That's too legendary. You, you just dead, can't. Dead you voice. Can't follow so. that. You can't follow that. Yeah. But aside, uh, from, aside from that, it was just like how he was portrayed just felt really weak. You were expecting, like, the biggest bad when you just got an apprentice. I, I was expecting, like, Sith Lord level. Well, yeah. you know, he wasn't Sith Lord, which is what yeah. I like about it. And mm-hmm. also I like how they didn't just kill him off at the end. Oh, that, that, that which actually it, was good. That, and they also which, didn't redeem him right away, if they're going to do that. That's the yeah. thing. I don't know if they're still even going to try. Him I don't know. It gave mm-hmm. him room to be better, yeah. like a lot uh, better. Oh yeah, yeah. They gave him room to grow. Um, if they follow the Darth Cadus route, uh, which apparently oh. was based on, um, he's not he going to get not, better. No, the, I think my guess, like as I said, I think the reason why they have him kill Han is to demonstrate that hey, so Luke redeemed his dad. You're not going to get that with this one. This guy's going to go full dark side. This guy is going to be like, you're going to see the development of a full on Sith Lord. You're going to see him go from little whiny emo kid to dry and Cthulhu level terror. That kind of thing. Yeah. But, the thing is um, with Darth Cadus, I just want to say this really quickly. He was already established way beforehand. He was also older. He was already an established, respected, mature you know, Jedi and like str- strategy leader, oh, can't strategist in the military. Strategist. And then he turned dark. He already had this reputation yeah. and this loving family behind him. And he, and he said his goal was like, he wanted security. It's like he wanted the dark side. He used the dark side to just like bring more order to the galactic Alliance. Cause he wanted the galaxy to be safe for his daughter. We don't have any of that in this movie. We don't know why he went bad. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, and that ties into one of my big critiques of Kylo Ren is it doesn't take a lot to establish motive for a character. Um, mo- but motive is very important. All right. We get that with Finn. Finn's motive is pretty good. It's like he sees atrocities. He's like, no, 
I'm nope. not going to participate. And he nope. runs. That's great. We know his motivation. His motivation is good. Ray's character contrast suffers. We don't know her motivation. Her motivation is, I want to go back to Jakku. I want to go home and find my parents. I want my family. I want my family. I might be Luke Skywalker's daughter. or I Yeah, something like that. But she doesn't have a clear motivation, so her character suffers. Poe has motivation. Fight First Order. Great. Cool. Finn's Um, motivation. Be badass. It works. Yeah. So, um... And uh, BB-8's motivation, beep boop. Follow Poe yeah. wherever he goes. Beep yes. Beep. Anyway, but Kylo Ren's motivation, other than I will finish what you started, that's about all we get. And that's vague and pathetic. It's like, no, I mean, there's no, I mean, the whole Han him scene, there, there was no hint of why Kylo fell out with his father, of why he would be motivated to kill him. I mean, that could have been some great emotionally revealing thing of like, oh, that's like, why he went dark since... side. That's that's mm-hmm. why he ran. That's why, like, he did what he did. Okay, cool. Yeah, you know, like that... even just as simple as like <clears throat> you were never like not like you were never there for me, but like you weren't yeah. there for me for my first steps, whatever. You weren't. You even didn't watch me grow up. You went out even something and whiny like did something you were now. holding me back. Like you weren't allowing me to to be as powerful as I could be, you know, like from Attack of the Clones. I mean, even as whiny as that you was. You just wanted me to be like you and mom. You wouldn't let me. It's like, what if I want to do something different? Yeah. Like anything. Well, anything. Yeah, yeah. There was no motive given to what he did. Now, th- now I do understand what they were going for in terms of, of his power and contrast. Though so each Sith Lord derives their dark side power from a different sort of evil dark side power. Not all Sith Lords are the same. The reason Palpatine was so insanely dangerous and successful is because he chose control. So his dark side was control. And because of that, he was strongly emotional, but he could actually do things because he didn't lash out. He was about control, self-control and control of others. That's why he was (coughs) better than previous Sith Lords who are all about like, you know, uh, you know, pride and some of the uh, more chaotic ones. So he was able to organize things. He was a mover. Vader was about fear, the fear of loss. Ren was about anger. And that was decently established. It's like, okay, he's clearly angry. That's why he lashes out. That's why those tantrums are about, you know, to some extent, you know, and the, 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 that as a demonstration was good, but we don't know why he's angry. Like, what are you angry about? Tell us, like, what made you angry? As is without knowing what made him angry. It looks like he has no reason to be angry because, hey, you're the you're the son of Han Solo, the coolest guy in the galaxy. What do you have to be angry about? Seriously, buck up, kid. You know, go hop on the Millennium Falcon and take it for a spin and cool off. What maybe, the heck? Maybe so, that's exactly it. Maybe he's just, you know, you're the son of Han Solo. What maybe it's because what do you got? All right. And Princess Leia is his mother. Maybe he just watched mom and dad fight too many times. Some, but when and and also, room. also, they sent him off to be trained under their Han and Leia's best friend, Luke Skywalker. Yo, his uncle. It's uncle, uncle his family Luke. member. Right, right. It's not, like a, not a random old man. It's his uncle. Yeah. Mm. Right. And, Plus, so they just sent him to be trained under them while Leia goes off being Princess Leia, being General, General Leia. Leia. And yeah. then Han Solo going off being Han Solo. Right. Well, but they don't establish that. See, we're guessing. They do establish that, actually. Like, no, just the Han thing is, like, Han... wow, Han Solo's your father? It's like, it's not as great as it sounds. No, no, no. The, they established that Han and Leia didn't really, like, drift apart until after Kylo went dark. They mm-hmm. they, they, they kind of made that clear in their dialogue, that Han and Leia were were fairly committed, loving couple until Kylo went dark side. That's what kind of drove a rift between. That's what mm-hmm. caused Han to retreat and just escape through smuggling again. Which is um, what he does. That's and that's and books. that's why Leia didn't mm-hmm. like have any mean words for him because it's, she understood that. She understood. Hey, you just lost your son. Okay, I'm going to give you some space. It's cool. And you know they were still in love with each other. They just understood mm-hmm. that they lost essentially lost their kid. I did um, love that scene where they reunited. I was yeah, it was that was, cool. was, was oh, but all the feels. But the, the problem is so because. We don't know the motive. They never really established the motive for Kylo Ren being angry. Hey. His tantrums just come off as, 
I'm going to be angry for no discernible reason. Rawr, flashlight, lightsaber, rawr, rawr. You know, I mean, the part where the stormtroopers turn back around and like, nope, nope, nope. That was great. That was an mm-hmm. awesome scene. It just, I wish it would have been funnier if, ah, uh, we, we knew why Kylo was so angry. Maybe, maybe it'll be established in one of the future two movies. Yes. Okay. I, I'm assuming it will be. It needed to be in this one to really make this. Does movie. it, does it though? Does it need to be in this movie? I, would, I mean, it's got hint. three movies to work on. At, at least a hint or a foreshadowing would have been worth it. I mean, I'm not asking for the entire exposition. I'm just asking for, give us a hint. Give us a couple sentences of dialogue somewhere that could have done that. You know, I mean, even, I mean, Vader, if you look at New Hope, Vader's motives weren't really well established. All you get about Vader is he murdered your father. That's it. But we get that. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, that's Luke's motive for defeating Vader. Like, he killed your father. I mean, that's all you needed is a, just a couple lines of dialogue. It's not a lot. Then sequels, you could have done flashbacks and all that. I'm not asking for anything complicated. Just give us something, man. They didn't. And it really hurt Ren is the, not knowing his motivation, not knowing what made him angry, just made him seem like a petulant child as opposed to, um, you know, something to actually like fear. I mean, we got demonstrations of power. That's cool. But it's just like, oh man, you're angry for no reason. Okay. You're, look how angry you are. Woo. That's not scary. It's not scary at all. Vader was intimidating and scary. Kylo Ren is not. I mean, I mean, I, I, he's what? still an apprentice. He still True. has time to work on it. But that. I mean, Darth Maul was an apprentice and he was freak Darth pretty Maul. scary. Was he an yeah. apprentice? Uh, no, he's yes. got the title Darth. That means he's a Sith Lord. True. Oh, he was the second to city. No, That's but there's true. always a Lord and an apprentice. Well, yeah. Well, there's, yeah, well, I mean, that doesn't Vader mean Darth the Vader was the apprentice. Or, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so he, he was, yeah, that's true. I, I would say, uh, Maul was probably further along than Kylo Ren is, but still. Well, yeah. But all, all I'm saying is he doesn't know how to go about it. Maybe. Maybe. Kylo but, Ren just like, he needs, he, his thing is anger, but he doesn't know how to like. Yeah. What is he angry about? Like, okay. f- focus the anger. Or, right. like, like right now, he's an apprentice, and his power is anger. And he's just angry at most things. Yes. <laughs> you know, he's throw going through crowd. a massive teenage angst, okay? Yeah. I at know. 29. <laughs> massive teenage angst, though, doesn't work as a motive for You're a, right. A good You're character. right. But, just, like, he's, he's still got plenty of growing room. I know. I just... I'm just talking about this movie in isolation. As I said, it's like the Matrix sequels. Again, the second Matrix movie, if the third Matrix movie had been great and like really wrapped things up, the second one, despite its weaknesses, would have been better. The second one is bad well, because I mean, the third one was really awful. And the, the, the Matrix bad. sequels were never planned to happen. It was it was originally planned for just the original Matrix. Movie. Right. Yeah, I know that. But so, um, yeah. here, I hear it's kind of like. You know, the, if the answer is we'll watch the next movie, that means this movie was lacking. It means this movie was missing a critical component. I, I don't, I don't subscribe to the let's stretch things out like that. It's like, no, it's not a TV series. The movie should be able to stand a little bit better on its own two feet. Um, that's maybe I'm just being old classical movie constructivist there. I, I um, think you are because it just got me just the movie as a whole. It got me. Hopeful. It got me wanting to like really go into Star Wars again. Like, make mm. me like this is Star Wars. This is what I've. This is what should have been. Like, right. like this is what it should have been. And okay. Now, like, real. Okay. I'm real, looking real. forward to the next movie and the next okay. movie after that. I'm even looking forward to the little little side movies that they're. That I, I will say I'm looking forward to Rogue One. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to the three uh, prequel movies here they've got planned out. Um, I like the idea of an Obi-Wan trilogy with Ian McGregor. Ian McGregor was far and away the best thing about the prequels. I would mm. love to see him do Very more true. Obi-Wan. No objections mm-hmm. at all to them doing something with that. Um, okay, so let's. Uh, so we already talked about Han dying. Uh, I think. All right, guys. Uh, I do want. I, I, I do want to say. I uh, do want to go into discussion. Uh, what are your what are your possible predictions for the next movies? Just brief, like a brief prediction for the next movies. Like, what do you think is going to happen? More, but, but more brief, Finn brief. and Poe. More Finn brief. and Poe. Oh well, that's obvious. But I'm saying, like, 
What is something you have in, uh, in the back of your heart that you're, you're predicting that's going to happen? That's really all I have, Finn and Poe. <laughs> I'm calling it right now. Ray's going to get her hand cut off. She needs to. I mean, please. are you? Are you? That's are you? Tradition. Are you serious? I, I'm being serious. Yeah. What? Wait, <laughs> hold on. Why is it tradition? Cause... Because someone always has their hands cut off oh, in Star on. Wars movies. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take that back. For two. I'll take yeah. that back. Ho, uh, Finn or Ray will have their hand cut off. Finn, really? Yeah. Uh, well, Not I mean, right. I mean, Finn already had his back sliced open. Yeah, but it's a trope. It, everyone's gonna, everyone gets a hand cut off. So I, 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 I honestly don't think so because except in Phantom Menace, but then they'll vary it up and make it a okay. Leg. Limbs leave in no, I, I, no, 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 no. Here's the thing. I, I got honestly it. don't think so. Darth Maul has cut in half, so both of his legs left. Anakin got his hand cut off in Episode Two. He had the other three Arm. limbs cut off in episode three, and then uh, Obi Wan cut off that guy's arm in the cantina in episode four, and then um, Empire Strikes Back. Luke gets his hands cu- Luke gets his hand cut off, and then episode six, Darth Vader gets his hand cut off by Luke. Again, I mean, so really every movie, hand, someone so. loses limbs. Okay, so it's normally what, hands. What limb got cut off in A New Hope or Ho- Force Returns or Force Awakens? Sorry. Well, None, and off. that was also disappointing. Uh, that was another that was thing. Weird. I was like, "Aw, uh, damn it! No well, lost your hand." Cut, 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 cut! Combo breaker, breaker. breaker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's so, like, we're uh, saying that's a bad thing. I honestly don't think it is because, like, oh uh, look, it's a Star Wars movie. Someone's got to get. No, it doesn't need to happen. It's just a little thing. And it it's, doesn't it's need fun. to happen. Oh, it doesn't need to happen, but I'm guaranteeing you next movie, it will happen. I don't it should happen, it yes. No, no, no. It doesn't have to happen, Tori. Well, I want yeah. it to happen. I'm sorry. So, I like this custom. Just because you want it to happen so, doesn't mean it should happen, Tori. All right. So someone's going to well, lose a limb. Everything you I want, didn't want, you want no I didn't want, anymore, no I didn't want Darth Maul to have spider legs, but yet yeah, that's canon. Here we go. Although, okay. I, I will say, as a non-joking uh, claim... We're gonna get Admiral Thrawn, Admiral Thrawn, for sure. Yeah, like, I don't know. I I really feel. I like mean, I can, hope so. I want that as well. Like, but it, 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 the way they're taking it, it could definitely happen. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm not gonna complain if it does, but I'm not gonna I complain would, if it I doesn't. I would be really happy if they do, because that would make the movies like immensely better. But yeah, do you, you really do you really mm-hmm. think J.J. Abrams would just like? completely go into the books that he declared not canon? I think he would take... Well, if he ripped Darth... His name probably wouldn't be Thrawn, but... I, he but I think, I, think he'd pick, I think he'd pick and choose what he likes. Yeah, mm-hmm. you could throw Fair a chiss in there. I mean, the, the, the race of aliens, you could have them represented. Uh, I didn't. And my prediction is that Leia is going to confront Kylo Ren in a suicide mission. Because oh, you think he's, they're going to make him kill the mom too? Oh God! Well, she's going to try. She's going to kill him, or she's like, "Really? Look, you really no, think that's going to happen?" No, no. You know what? You know what? She's I gonna try. Think? No, you she's going to try. It's like, okay, no. What happened in the books? Granted, it was a like it was a it was a dream sequence. Is that she fights him and she throws both of them like she breaks the window and she throws them into the vacuum. Both of them into the vacuum of space. You know what I oh, think will double. happen? It's like, you're going with me. I'm you know what I think will I'm happen? I'm taking you with me. And that's you know what, fitting. You know what now. I think will happen? Okay, what? Luke Skywalker dies to Snoke. Okay. Mm-hmm. I could, that I could, could happen. That. I could, mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see Luke Skywalker dying. Um, yeah, I was actually expecting Luke, I will say. I was Han was one theory. I was actually expecting Luke Skywalker to die in this movie. To mirror A New Hope and Phantom Menace. Because usually yeah. the mentor figure dies at the start of the trilogy. Um, so Luke's lucky. He broke that trend. Um, well, Han is still but, a mentor. Yeah, I like guess Han is the kind of figure in this one. Yeah, Especially Han, since they're like, oh, wow, you're the legendary Han Solo. Yeah. Yeah, Han Han gets to be the Obi-Wan, and which is kind of hilarious. It, like, for <laughs> it him, is. Yeah. He's just uh, like awkwardly patting these kids' backs. Yeah, and he doesn't get a force ghost um, because he's not a force. He's sensitive. not force. Can I? Can I? Can I point out one thing? Mm. I really like the fact that Chewbacca gave no fucks about anyone else or any other uh, people in the uh, base when he blew the fuck out of it. 
Like he was willing to take himself out and everyone else out yeah. just to well, uh, because get it's revenge. Like the guy he owes a life, like he failed his life debt. He it's not true. only uh, one of the Flash, the fan comics I really liked shows Kyle, Ben Solo growing up, and it shows him, you know, he's he Kylo grew up with Chewbacca. Chewbacca is a friend of the family, so Kylo mm-hmm. and Chewbacca grew up with each other, and the comic like focus on that and i'm like hey you know i didn't think about that and that's an excellent touch so when chewbacca's filing a firing at kylo he's firing at a kid he probably helped to raise which is a very impactful moment but because they don't do anything about like setting up kylo's backstory you don't feel it you know you have to it's fridge logic you have to realize it later but they don't establish it in the film which would have made that scene way more impactful when chewbacca just unloads on kylo it's like i'm going to kill you now it's like I'm going to kill the son of the well, man. I mean, that not? reminds me Perhaps? of something really funny I saw. Where uh, okay, 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 basically, so Kylo was pretty much raised by Chewbacca as one of his caretakers. So what if he learned his language, and so they get into a shouting match where you know Chewbacca's doing his thing, and then Kylo Ren is just yelling back, you know, the growling noise. Except that, except that people other than uh, or beings other than. Uh, Wookiees can't speak or can only understand it. What if he like tries to speak? To, to, Tori, Tori, take your Tumblr BS out of here. What? How do you know that's from Tumblr? Because you you're from Tumblr. Take your Tumblr BS, put it in the trash can, and take it outside to where it belongs. Take it to the curb. My curb's covered in snow, so good luck okay. with that. Okay, Professor. So, I actually had a thought on that about uh, Chewbacca shooting at him, perhaps. Uh, hmm. In this backstory that has been fridge logic, tell, fur- tell a further point, that uh, sure, uh, Chewbacca may have raised him, but whatever happened to, uh, may have happened that caused uh, Kylo to go dark side, like betrayed Chewbacca so much is that he doesn't even. Like recognize him as family anymore? Yeah, entirely possible. The um, uh, oh, you were gonna ask me something? Oh no, I was gonna say, Professor, what is your prediction? Oh, for predictions, um, let's see. So I'm gonna predict. Yeah, I think they're going to explore. We're gonna get the flashbacks. Uh, we're gonna get to see the Knights of Ren because they they saw them flashback. They hinted at it. Um, maybe uh, um. I, I predict that Mark Hamill will use the Joker voice for Luke Skywalker. No, I'm kidding. Oh my uh, god. That would be awesome, but no. No, no, it would no it wouldn't. It'd be uh, It'd be funny. Uh, well, years uh, in isolation can drive a person crazy. Uh, like even Yoda, he was very wise, and then Oh god. Uh, <laughs> and then when Luke got to Yoda. Master Yoda. <laughs> Yeah, he mm, might do that just to troll. <laughs> Can you imagine like Luke doing that to troll Ray? It's like it's like no, I'm just I mean, I, I mean that is, that is how Yoda troll tr- Yoda did troll uh, troll Luke with that. So you know, yeah, do the same thing. Mmm, funny joke. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Um, okay. Anyway, but uh, let's see. In terms of let's more serious predictions, um, we're I think we're gonna we're gonna see what Snoke is. Uh, I think Snoke is going to be a Wizard of Oz situation where it's going that giant hologram. I mean, obviously that was um, and stuff. Uh, it's all for show. Like that's yeah. not pay no attention stuff. to the man behind the curtain. Okay, so who else thought at first that was actually his size? Anyone else? Me too. At first, at first, that no, would have been no, cool. no. I, 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 I for I, like I, a moment I thought that was actually his actual size, and I was like, hey, that's probably just a hologram. No, yeah. I immediately, I immediately call bullshit. I'm like, no. Imagine a lightsaber for a guy that size. Oh, like, sweet Christ! <laughs> yeah, he's either going to be like really, really tiny, or the uh, as I said, I think it's a uh, man behind the mask. I, I think we'll get to see who Snoke really is and who's manipulating the situation. Um, now, Snoke as a Palpatine clone would be cool. I'd be Ooh. down with that. Mm. If Snoke's a Palpatine. Well, Alone, the, I'm there, okay with this. There are theories that Snoke is the guy who trained Palpatine. Plagueis. Right. Plagueis, yeah. Plagueis? Ooh. Yeah, uh, Circus, that already, would be cool. uh, they've already shot that one down. They've already come really? out and said it is not Darth Plagueis. Yeah. Um, or I perhaps think- the lion just to throw us off. Yeah. No, well, because Andy Circus plays um, uh, Snoke's. So Gollum is Snoke's. Wait, really? Yeah. That's Andy Circus's character. The Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so, the he, force. So, Circus, so Circus has already said it is not Plagueis. Um, the uh, so we don't know who he is just yet, but you know, Palpatine clone could be maybe. Hopefully, it's something cool and not stupid. Um, you know, let's see. I'd I also mean, be down like one of the ancient Sith lords. Um, oh god, the, the one of them has a name start with E, like not Enzo, but like, um, oh god, um, yeah, if you. You know, one of the ancient Sith Lords would be, fu- I'd be fine with too. Like, it's a force ghost of one of the really old ones. Um, blah. I can't, I can't think of the names off the top of my head. I don't have those memorized. Ah, uh, the, um, Darth Revan. Revan? Ah, okay. That would work. Um, Malik? It's, it's not actually confirmed if that's, been, that is canon or not. Okay. The, um, well, there was one, um, God, there was one who, uh, actually appeared in the books as a ghost. Um, and he actually. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I lied. I lied. Revan. Sarkoon, there it is. Oh, okay. Uh, Revan yeah. is canon, but the, the story that was portrayed in Knights of the Old Republic is not canon. Okay. So there is a Revan, just not how we know him as. Yes, not as you know him. Yeah, so Exar Kun. I I would love for Snoke to be like the Force Ghost of Exar Kun or something. I again be down with that. Um, let's see. I kind of hope Finn and Ray doesn't happen because it's predictable. I don't like that. Yeah. Um. Also, I just don't like Ray. Ray is my least favorite. You um, think Ray will get interesting next episode? I hope. I mean, maybe she could. Like, Luke could. wasn't very interesting in A New Hope. He got better. It's true. Maybe. That's, so that it, is maybe, true. Maybe, uh, since, like, it felt like in the first episode, it was more focused on Finn than Ray. Perhaps in the next one, it'll be more focused on Ray than Finn, because maybe Finn will do, it'll have, like, a recovery period since his, he had his yeah. back sliced open. I think they're, I think they're setting up Ray, Luke, shenanigans, and the Millennium Falcon. Uh, so Luke's oh. gonna show her all the hot spots of where to get wasted. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> The, uh, uh, that's we'll probably, like this is where I drink my sorrows. Yeah. So after, I mean, after the Kylo nephew, right? Yeah. We're going to get a Dagobah uh, analog for the next one between Luke and Ray. That's obvious. Um, you know, Luke is going to be the Yoda to Ray. Did, um, didn't it been has it been established that Kylo Ren killed off all of Luke's other apprentices, except for uh, the Knights of Ren, who the are Knights like the the other Dark Jedi who teamed up with him. Dark Jedi. Yeah. The, the, you see them in the flashback. That's in the movie. Uh, someone S- pointed that out to me. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I hate the term Dark Jedi. Well, because they're f- not Sith. Kylo it's... Ren is not a Sith. He's a Dark Jedi. He is a Jedi who uses the, the dark side of the Force, but he isn't a full Sith because, as you point out, he's still an apprentice. Well, I mean, he's still Sith, just an apprentice. But, like, the, the term Dark Jedi is kind of an oxymoron to me. Yeah. Um, I, I wish mean, I could. Say that's like a rebellious <laughs> monk. It, yeah. it could be like a. It's it's not a gray Jedi, so that wouldn't make sense. Yeah, gray Jedi still fight for good. Dark Jedi go. Uh, they fight for neutrality than good. Yeah, they strive for perfect balance of both light and dark. True neutral. Yeah. Yes. Um, but uh, let's see. Oh dear, I just had one. Oh, uh, hopefully Phasma will get to do something. Like she will. Phasma- Oh, Phasma was hyped to the moon in this movie. And I'm like, okay, cool. I like, you know, imperial, uh, like, cool imperial women who are, like, women in like armor, military man. and, like, mm. kick butt. I'm down with that. Like, Admiral Dalla in the books is was one of my favorite characters in the book. And they got rid of her, which I'm sore about. But, okay, Phasma. So, no Dalla, but we get Phasma. Okay. And then she doesn't do anything. It's like, come on, guys. You just, the most she does is get thrown into a trash compactor. It's like, what yeah. the heck? And it didn't like, even see that. Yeah, it's like, I mean, you go, they're a trash compactor, and that was it. They put her on all this marketing material. They got a great actress for her, and then they don't do anything with her. It's like, what's Brienne the point, guys? Like, you could have just. There's no. I mean, ah, oh, this this is that. Oh, that was annoying. I was disappointed by the lack of Phasma. I wanted Phasma to do more. Like the whole like traitor scene. That should have been Phasma versus Finn, and then yeah. but with like Phasma just getting wounded and having to retreat. That would have been better if. Phasma had been the traitor stormtrooper, that would have been better. Um, you know, and, and by the way, the traitor stormtrooper is best character, period. 
obvious, you know, the, number the, one. The, 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 the stormtrooper with the stun JD baton. 007. Yeah. Oh man. Best character best Star Wars character, number one. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. The traitor trooper who yells traitor and pulls out a fucking stun baton tonfo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah Which is fucking badass. I love that. I know. That was cool. I'm like, oh wow, it can actually yeah. go against the light. No, 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 That's guys, awesome. guys. Yeah. Give give four of those Tonfas to Grievous. We got we got an action flick. Uh, well, they did. Remember in the prequels, his guards wielded, wielded those tonfas. No, 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 That's no. no. Okay, okay, give give him give him the spinning tonfas while his hands spin. Let's not. We got something going. Let's not. Another one of my another good part, good thing about this movie is. Th- there was a very minimal amount of lightsabers, and that's what I liked about it. That 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 was actually good. That is oh. nice. You saved there it. There was there was only two lightsabers shown in the movie, and I liked it. Yeah. See, I liked. So, okay, I like Revenge of the Sith for the final fight between Anakin and Obi Wan. Are you serious? That was the most boring fight ever. Well, again, you don't like Jedi very much. No, I no. Do, I mean, it's so. not that I don't like Jedi. It was just a very boring fight. Oh, Honestly. All right. I Honestly, like the fight between Obi Wan and Darth Vader was much better than the fight between Obi Wan and Anakin. Uh, I don't know. Why? I like because the because there was more meaning behind it. Be well, in the fight between Anakin and Obi Wan, it was just a fight for the sake of okay, this guy v this guy fight. But in, no, no, what? but no, no, no. But there was some emotional context. There, there. was barely any. Okay, emotional granted, Esmond, I do like that and fight the emo- between Anakin and Darth Vader. I do feel like the one between um, Mace Windu and Palpatine. That one is the one that shook me to my core. Did you just say? Did you just Palpatine? say Palpatine? Wow! Palpatine! Palpatine! Oh, wow! Get out! Get out die hard, st- die hard, Star Force fan. For ten, for ten years. You give me ten nights, God damn it. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and jump onto our last segment of the. I movie. wasn't done. Well, we're <laughs> we're running out of time. You know. Okay. You no. Know, oh, I, hold on. I just want to throw this out. I so, keep getting God, interrupted. We've all agreed that God BB-8, fucking damn it. So BB-8 is Frisk. Uh, we've all agreed that. Stop! Uh, stop! I will. <laughs> I swear to Christ, I will burn your books. What? BB-8 is Frisk. I think that works. I mean, he's I, like... I will burn your book. So, I, so BB-8 can save. I swear to BB-8 Christ, had the I save file. So I don't I, get to finish what I was saying earlier. Okay, okay. R- Ryan. No, no, it's too late. We're already... Skip Ryan, okay, Ryan, fine. Ryan. Go ahead and finish it off, but in yes, 50, words, sorry. 50, 50 words or less. Yeah, you know... No, I'm, I'm good. I-, I love you. I'll give you a little kiss. Oh. Yeah, oh. Give, give me a little kiss on the cheek. Mm. Sorry, I just wanted to get that out there before we moved on. Well, I mean, like, you could have said that after. I, now Sorry. I lost my train of thought super hard. Thanks, Tori. Sorry. For constantly Sorry. fucking interrupting me this whole fucking episode. <laughs> God fucking damn it with your mispronunciation and your misquoting. Sick of your shit. You're fired. <laughs> Editing you out uh, this whole fucking episode. Right? I, su- I second this motion. Let's start looking at applications. How's that? How's that? How's that one guy? Uh, Slur- uh Slurder. Oh, uh, he's doing good. We could definitely bring him on, or we could bring Kaidem. You know, whoever. You know, that's the most nice choice. Would she? Would, would, would they? The would they interrupt me during during a uh, during a uh, thing that I was saying? I mean, they might. Oh, but well. I, but at least they won't say pal at the time. Oh, well, so I okay. Think I, that's a bonus. That's a bonus. I think all of our applicants, though, have. have I've asked us how much we're going to pay them, though, to join. That, mm. I think that might be a disqualification. Hey, I didn't get paid to join. I get paid to edit. I'm getting paid in love. We love you, Professor. Yes. Uh, I don't love we give you. you. We pay you in the utmost By respect. love, I mean levels of violence. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, push the button. Let's do this shit really quick, because holy crap. How long has this episode been? Just out of curiosity. Long story short. The final fight scene in Revenge of the Sith was boring because oh, it was okay. it was more visual than it was emotional. It had less meaning than the visuals. I don't know. I'd... If 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 it fo- if it took some of the effort they put in the visuals and put it behind the meaning of the fight, then it would have been better. I okay, that one I can agree on. Um, but I will say, like after watching Attack of the Clones, the cartoon and the third movie, you do get a sense that they really were close friends. And so seeing them fight does have a, oh, here's the falling out. Oh. You know, so you have that. 
And I like the Palpatine well, Yoda fight. That was fun. in episode two. It was more said than shown that they were close friends. True. Yeah, like in the beginning, they were like, "Hey, remember this? Remember yeah. this? How about this?" And then the next scene afterwards, he's like, "Why do I have to listen to you? It's not like you're my master or anything." Yeah. Well, <laughs> the, I think the Clone Wars cartoon does a very good job, though, of establishing their friendship. I keep mm-hmm. hearing good things about it. I just need to get around to watching it's it. It's on Netflix. You do. You do. I guess it's, it's just really I'm good. incredibly cynical because I like the miniseries a lot. Like, I super like the miniseries. Oh, everyone does. I mean, I think most people do. Yeah. I mean, it's Gendy Tartoff. The guy who did Samurai Jack did it, so it's awesome. Yeah. Also, I there's this video on YouTube that shown that if you take the lightsaber swings and actually like track out where it's gonna swing, ninety five percent of the swings that they take will actually miss the body. Like five <laughs> percent of the swings will actually hit the body. That it like the rest of it is just meant to hit the other lightsaber. Well, that's the force. They were using that's... the force to deflect the blows. Ah, no, no, no. I'm making that up. I no. made that up. Anyway, Metaclorian. <laughs> okay, who's got the who's got push the button ready? Say, I got the I, button. I got I got a button question. Let me let me do this one first. The for everyone. button question. The, bo- the button. Would the you ha- Would you receive two million dollars, but you have to smell socks of your dad for the rest of your life? Okay. I'd push the button because jokes on you. My dad doesn't wear socks, <laughs> so you just have to upright smell his feet. Or you no, have to smell it, his it, shoes. It's supposed to say no. It's his socks. No, no, no. You you'd still have to smell his socks, like whether or not he wears them. Like, well, I mean, they they, they smell like they smell clean. Okay. I okay. Mean, I, so I don't. I, so I don't John really would lose. press the button. Tori? I don't. I don't lose. I'll I'll press the button. I'll suffer through it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, no, my dad my dad doesn't have the foot smelling problem. My mother does, and she uh, gave it to my sister. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'd push the button, too. My dad had pretty clean feet. His, mm. his socks never really stank or anything. <laughs> Ryan. <would you laughs> I like how we just know these things. It's like, I, I, oh, I, oh, no, yeah, my I'm, dad's socks are I don't know, $2 million? Dollars? Like, yeah, if I, if I would have my dad's sock smell, like, lingering around me for the rest of my life. I could probably deal with it for two million dollars. Yeah, I, I just well, you know, I would just get one of them like one of them oil melty things that you light you turn on the light and it melts the oil above it. And yeah, they're like I, candles plus. I love the like, things. Oh, oh well, no. I mean, we I, all as kids like played around our parents' feet. That's why we know what the smells like. Cause it's I, like just, oh. I just I mm-hmm. just I just had a really bad thought. I, what? Uh, what? What? what if what if it wasn't a sock your dad wore on his foot, but he wore his foot? <gasps> oh, oh, it well, doesn't that, say, it, it doesn't say his feet. That's very clever. <laughs> it doesn't say his feet. It just it, it, his, your dad's socks. Well, oh. you know, you already said yes, so no takes his back seats. Next oh, question. Oh, we all said yes. We all said yes. So too late. <laughs> right? You're gonna see that crusty sock lingering. Hey, there, buddy. Oh, it's it's Friday. You know it. You want your money, right? It's Friday. You know what that means, Sonny. <laughs> oh, oh, come okay. on. I just refreshed, and I got a really stupid question that's obvious. Okay, Tori, oh. what's your, okay, Tori, what's your question? Okay, for you guys. Okay, you get to go to all of your favorite artists or bands' concerts, but they always play the same three Britney Spears covers. The same three Britney Spears covers! <laughs> <laughs> I I want to hear Metallica play uh oh what the fuck's that one? Oof, did, did it again. again. Hit me baby one more time. Hit me, that's it. Oh, that'd be good. What about I want to hear Metallica play Hit Me Baby one more time. What's that uh, one? Typo okay. Negative did a cover of that song, which is actually really amazing. But is it your favorite band? That's the thing. Yeah, no, no, but I'm just saying the um well, Clear, Creedence Clearwater Revival doing Britney Spears would be really flippin' weird. That would be weird. Uh, Not gonna lie, would, that'd be weird. I'd love to see. I'd love to hear Daft Punk play. Uh, Oops, I did it again. That what, would. Yeah, okay, that, so we established two of the two of the songs. What's the third song? Hold on. Uh, yeah, I'm um, to think. What womanizer? Toxic. Woman- toxic. I like Toxic more than Womanizer. No, it should be one of the really, really stupid slutty ones. Oh, oh I'm no. Slave for You. 
No. No, let's just do with like her better songs. Oh, right? why, why don't we just do our favorite three? I mean, does, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be subjective to what uh, all of us like. It just has to be. I, I our think. F- it, I think it does. It says they always played the same three Britney Spears. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm but it's, it's so it has quite, to be uh, the same for all of us. Yeah. But guys, if we're building our own perception, it's our own three songs. So. Yeah, it does mm-hmm. seem to be our choice. All right. Okay, I I, I would. I would. That would be fun to see Panic at the Disco sing. Okay. I, I, I would, wait, hold on. Your favorite band's Panic at the Disco. Are you? Wait, what? Yeah. Oh. Tor- Tori, you're just losing brownie points today. I don't care. I'm not here for you. Oh. I mean, I mean, you kind of are, but. <laughs> okay, Ryan, do you have a question? You know what? This is too soon. I'm not asking this one. Tori, you got a question? I've got okay. one loaded. Oh. Okay, Professor, what's your question? All right. <clears throat> you will be remembered as a hero and a legendary sword master, but you will die a slow, painful, but heroic death. Fuck that shit. I, I, I would do it. Tori, you're going to die. Well, I'm going to die anyway. Like, I'll die at some point. I don't want to die like a in a boring normal way i want to go out and people be like oh no she was so brave i want a lot of people at my funeral <laughs> oh my god got one for you guys <clears throat> tori tori i'd want to be known as the guy who killed the legendary sword master you you could do that you could be the one who killed me yeah exactly so there you go okay got okay, one for you guys. okay i got one you can live in a world created just for you with everything pleasing in any way possible but you are actually plugged into a giant machine that feeds you this delusion and harvests your kinetic energy to fuel its mechanical hell of the former world you lived in on. <laughs> wait, what? So the the matrix. Matrix. <laughs> that was a little too fast. Wait, wait, so are you saying the Matrix? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're basically the Matrix. Would you be yeah. in the Matrix, but the Matrix yes. is the perfect world for you? Yes. I, I. You know what? Robots are taking over already, so fuck it. Or, yeah, you know, I would. Yeah, same here. Might as well. Yeah. Professor? Okay, professor. What? Yes. Oh, so it's a yes. Uh, wait. Sorry. Is it... <laughs> you want I, me to repeat I... the question for you? <laughs> wait. Is it? Do I agree to get plugged into the matrix? You can live in a world created just for you, with everything pleasing in any way possible, but you're actually plugged into a giant machine that feeds you this disillusion or delusion and harvests your kinetic energy to feel its mechanical hell of the former world you lived on. Yeah, I'm going to go with a no. I don't like fake stuff like that. I mean, I avoid MMORPGs. What? I don't want a... F- no. Virtual worlds don't have much appeal to me. Okay, so last question okay. or... Last I question. got another one. I got a good one. Last question. Okay. You don't will fuck find, up, Tori. You will find a perfect woman or man who loves you, but she or he will start to hate you after 10 years. I think that's in any case ever. No, that's but just, you're guaranteed ten years, though. That's just marriage. That's yeah. That's just marriage. But like, it'll go sour after ten years, and like, it has to go sour. So, would you have this definite ten-year marriage? I mean, have you looked at the divorce rates? Like, yes, in the I in have. the U.S. especially. I mean, mm-hmm. you'd be lucky if some couples last uh, ten years. Look! 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 Here's how you take advantage of this one. Mm-hmm. You, you, if your ideal person is rich and they're willing to, and they're just perfect, have them sign a prenup, or don't, or you know what, don't have them sign a prenup. Yeah, because you're the poor person in this. Did divorce? The, okay, after t- after ten prenup. year, after ten years, divorce them, take all their money, get remarried. There you go. I mean, it's horrible to say, but fuck it. I mean, if, if, if these are theoretical questions, I'm taking it advantage. It is inevitable. Yeah. Granted, it does say that yeah. who loves you. It doesn't say that you love them. So you could have been oh. feeling nothing for 10 years. And so it's nothing for you to dump them. Exactly. Wow. Mm. Wow. Clever, clever girl. And we wonder why you're single, Tori. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to press this button. I no. will. No, I will too. I will not press this button. Dude, Ryan, money. I'm sorry, but I'm a romantic. Sorry. Ryan, you can, with that money, you Fine. Can, with then that you're the money, one who's going to get your heart broken after 10 years, and I will move on. 
Ryan, with what? What if he belie- he said he's the romantic, so he's going to love the person. I'm not going to love the person. They're just going to love I me. Told, yeah, I that's told. why, and that's why we wonder why you're single. Mm-hmm. Dude, Ryan, with all that money you get from marrying I- your ideal person, you can buy all the butts you want. Yeah, but that's not me, though. I mean, okay. <laughs> All right, guys, everybody, that's been the Communicast. Um, you can check us out on twitter.com slash blacknaffle101 or on, or on facebook.com slash the Communicast. Um, yet again, we'll be at PAX South. Look for us. And any last words, guys? Uh, yes. So, in addition to PAX South, so the week after, I will be at Ushikon. Um, hopefully, by then, I will have my new microphone. Um, it's been delayed because the mail sucks, uh, post office sucks. Uh, people tampering with mail sucks, so my mic got delayed, but hopefully. And, hope- a, f- and a federal offense. Yeah. Um, so hopefully I'll have my new mic. And the goal is I'm going to be a panelist at UshiCon, and I will record my panels so you can hear them. So I'll be doing uh, one. my first panel Saturday morning, and the second is Sunday afternoon at UshiCon. That's uh, here in Round Rock. So you can come play. I'll be running uh, Ice Brass Revolution all weekend there. Uh, this is the uh, week after PAX South. Uh, so this is uh, February 5th through 7th. And, and on that... Uh, and uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash silverfits91. I'm not going to PAX South because uh, I can't afford it right now. So yeah, I'll be definitely on there playing Blades of Soul and Ark. Survival Evolved. Wait, you got Blade and Soul? Yeah, it's super good. We're gonna we should play. Huh? We should play. Alright, I've already got like this big clan of from with the people that I play Ark with. Oh, okay. I mean I'm sorry. I'm not cool enough for you. Oops. That's okay. Good night everybody. Good night everybody. You may or may not see Tori next week. Bye bye. Bye. Good night, sleep tight. Probably Farewell. I'm one of the most faithful. Live long and prosper. Farewell, space cowboys.